take a walk with me. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. It's time. It's time for penises, everybody. I know that you came here for the stream, but unfortunately, it's just dicks through and through. Welcome. Um, <clears throat> how you guys doing? We're going to be looking at some users in the evening. It's a little later than you usual, but, um, well, you know, I was just lazy and tired and I, um, started playing Yakuza Dead Souls. You know, the weird zombie one that never got re-released anywhere. Yeah, I started playing that. Uh, and obviously that took precedence, so, you know, uh, stream had to come second to that. Uh, but, but we're here now. And, uh, it's time. I understand there's a funny new bingo that some people are playing that, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak on that. I don't know. But, uh, I think, uh, you, you might have had, you but some people might have just had a bingo space. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the Yakuza's. But we're gonna do some stuff here. And, uh, I don't have anything too particular. I will say, excitingly, um... We have a new enemy in town. There's yet another uh, big time new like uh, content creator sexual assault allegation. Apparently, um, it's this like Minecraft guy who uh, I, I guess he wanted to bite this woman. And uh, well, it's it's very it's very similar to other things we've seen recently. It, it looks. Pretty similar, uh, so I don't think we'll look at that today, but funny allegation February just keeps on keeping on, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, you know, the, f the concept of doing themed months is kind of fun, but I don't really think we're necessarily doing themed months. I don't want to be beholden to that. You know, uh, I kind of say that as a joke, like, haha, yeah, this is the theme of this month. It kind of was last month, the theme was, was users, and then Christmas month, and... Halloween month, you get a bit of that too, but you know we don't need to do anything really specific for March. Uh, we can ju we can just continue doing funny allegations and maybe also users and maybe also like you know more Darman. Maybe it's been a while since we've Dard. Uh, Darch is d I know maybe not themed months, but like Darch is potentially gonna happen. Um, but you know. It's currently February. I don't want to necessarily do any more funny allegations at the moment. I think uh, at the moment I just want to find some train boys, maybe some Blues Clues guys. You know, play it safe. You know, stay on the on the <laughs> on the right side of history. Uh, we we got a channel here. I guess I could begin with this. I saw some people talking about this one. This one's kind of been uh, gaining some attention. Uh, there's a channel, there's a channel here called, um, Kelobi Productions, and, uh, they do cartoon stuff, but crucially they do, uh, um, strange age gap crushes in kids' cartoons, addressing weird age gap crushes. Um, we got some gay and trans stuff happening here in the all gender restroom in in uh, Inside Out Two. Um, we've got uh, strict rules Riley has to follow in Inside Out. This was the one that was kind of mainly drawing people's attention. So I guess we'll start with this one. There are some strict rules in Inside Out that Riley. Hang on, we we need some we need some better quality on this. There you go. There are some Look at this depressed motherfucker. This guy looks like most streamers. Strict rules in Inside Out that Riley must follow. The parents have made a chain of command that when broken results in a harsh punishment. One concerning rule is that Riley must eat vegetables. The father takes a scoop of broccoli and puts it in front of his daughter, giving her no freedom to eat what she wants. What if Riley wanted to eat something else? What okay, well, it's this seems like it's just a joke. I mean, it just seems like it's meant to be funny. What is the point of feeding your children food that they don't want to eat? His proposal was met but, with- But this is reminding me of all of the people who are really into the grounded, grounded, grounded thing, so maybe they hope that she gets in more trouble than she really is. Is this character stolen from the game Tonic Trouble? This this character looks like the guy from Tonic Trouble. 
And you just put up, put him on, put him in a in a in a weird argyle vest and just called it a day. Disgust. And Riley rejects the offer to eat that broccoli, which prompted her dad to put down another harsh rule, saying that she won't be allowed to eat dessert. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not going to get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? Even at a young age, she is imposed with a plethora of rules that she must adhere to. Although. <laughs> Yeah, even at a young age, I think a lot of people t tends to be the way of things. Uh, I, I, this seems, again, it seems like this is just like a funny, you know, like, um, remember that one video somebody suggested we watch it? Uh, it was a video of, it was like a true crime video analyzing the uh, c series finale of Seinfeld and like the court case thing that happens in that. And it was, you know, analyzing it like it was a real thing. You know, the the joke could be that obviously she's a kid and this is normal treatment. I, I don't know, but I don't know about this channel. Maybe this guy's just a fucking weirdo. Riley didn't like broccoli. She eventually gave in and ate her food. While the parents in Inside Out do seem to show... Somebody just says, bro, it's Inside Out. You know, that's the real fact. That's the that's the facts of the matter here. Sir, and about Riley's health, one could make the argument that this is just the beginning of their strictness. Does she have like a pachinko machine inside her? What the fuck Sir, is that? Sir, about Riley's health, one could make the argument... All right, we've queued up the Zuma machine. She's ready to fire her beat em -ons. That This is just the beginning of... Is that her materia bar? Strictness. Another questionable rule... I, I have to point out, though, that the... The, the dad in Inside Out is this is really reminding me of the the fucking Johnny Johnny Yes Papa father. He's the guy. Remember the old Danny Gonzalez video about the the dad from those videos, the Papa who they like removed and they replaced him with a different Papa, and and he was no longer that he didn't have a mustache. He was like a complete. This is the old Papa. I guess his his new his 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 new life is Inside Out the beginning of their strictness. Another questionable rule is that Riley must go to her room when she disrespects her parents. Questionable rule? That's it. I mean, I guess it's possible that the, that the, okay, now this is just Eddie Burback. Uh, I guess it's possible that this guy just didn't have parents who raised him like a child, like a normal child, and they just had no boundaries whatsoever, and this guy's like, and what's unrealistic about this movie is that they make her go to bed sometimes, like, my parents, usually I would just threaten them at knife point and then I would get to stay up as long as I wanted. Go to your room. Now. She is essentially put in time out, giving her no chance to apologize for what she's done in the moment. This harsh sentencing from the dad doesn't allow her to have any wiggle room. After having a rough couple of weeks, Riley told her parents to shut up. At this point in the movie, she'd had one of the worst days of her life and had had enough. Accompanying this rule would be the dad claiming that he doesn't tolerate disrespect. So this, this video came out three months ago, by the way. Not a very warmly received video. I, I can see potentially why. It's very strange so far. Because it's, there's no jokes here. I mean, there's no, like, wink and nod to the audience that makes you real... Boy, I really don't like his lips, by the way. There's something off about this whole mustache, lips, teeth, beard situation that's going on here. It's not good. Um, but, I mean, there's no jokes. It's not like it's, like, written like it's supposed to be funny. So we have to just assume that it's actually not intended to be, like, a joke that the guy is blowing this out of proportion. He must have... I mean, I guess he must just actually believe this, or this is a fetish thing, or... Young lady, I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. Inside Out having such dark moments like this prompted real-life parents to respond like this. This film is not for sensitive people. I found it chaotic, disturbing. It left me feel... Who the fu... What the fuck now? What are we doing now? Having what? such dark moments like this prompted real-life parents to respond like this. Oh, real-life parents. This film is not for sensitive people. I found it chaotic. How do you know this is a real-life parent? It just says for the youth who watch it. Maybe this is just... You know, one of those fucking weirdos who's in their adult years, but they still watch cartoons. Maybe it's just one of those degenerates. I don't know. Um, no, not necessarily a, a parent, but okay. Disturbing. It left me feeling frustrated and anxious for the youth who watch it. 
However, this wouldn't be the end of the criticism for the movie. Many parents would also follow suit by writing low reviews due to the fact that they would have to explain to their own kids what was happening each step of the way. We have to remember that Inside Out is a complicated movie. Is it? And with it being filled with so many strict rules and sadness being at the forefront, can you blame them? Pivoting know, back to the shut up scene. I know a lot of people don't like... Oh, this is a good pause frame. I, I know a lot of people don't like this movie because it's like... I don't know, really simple or something. Like, it, it oversimplifies things. Uh, which I, I, I would say is fair just because it's a kid's movie doesn't mean it, you know, everything... Em emotions don't need to be simplified in the way that they maybe seem like they are in this at least but i i don't know i mean i haven't seen it uh i i, I don't know is there like a fucking inside out community that still like makes videos like this and clicks on videos like this that aren't pedophiles that movie came out in 2010 didn't it the dad's parenting style may even seem lackluster to some what would your parents do if you told them to shut up? Would you even survive the night? Regardless of your opinion and position on this issue and parenting style, you have to admit that this was an intense scene all around. Moving away from this, another strict yeah, rule still. is that Riley must commit to her extracurricular activities. Her mother is adamant about having her fit. This feels like a video made by a user by any other name where it's like it doesn't really feel like it i mean he doesn't talk like a user he's composed the video's edited like a normal video somewhat you know but it's but it's like he's 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 it's riley's parents force her to do her activities i don't want to clean my room mom it it, it i don't know it, there's something about this there's there's something very strange about this finish her tryouts Riley, what's wrong? Let's go. You're not gonna finish tryouts? What's the point? Hey, it'll be all right. Let's just stop saying everything will be all right. And this Jordan is says time that she has brought this up. Her lack of awareness that her child might not be happy is an afterthought to her. Riley's own mother requires that. Uh, I mean, all, all right. There's maybe an argument you can make that the parents. I don't know. Aren't aren't paying enough attention to the needs of their child but uh, i i don't know who gives a shit i mean she finished her tryouts and that by completing that task she will be fulfilled but the like i mean the, you know there's the people that are like oh who cares bro it's just a kid's movie whatever but i mean like i don't usually agree with that but i mean in this case it's like i mean i don't know it's just a it's a minor I, the guy's making it seem like it's some horribly disturbing part of this movie that, like, needs to be addressed or something. I mean, it's just a minor conflict that I would assume gets addressed by the end of the movie. I mean, I would assume that the fucking movie probably ends with, like, Riley hugging her parents or whatever and, you know... Smash Mouth All Star plays over the credits or some shit. I don't the rules know. didn't just stop there. Might have come out a little too late to for that. To but... Her teacher has her own set of rules outlined for the class. Each new student must introduce themselves in front of the class, and that new student is Riley. Oh my Riley? God! Would shock you like to and tell horror. Us something about yourself? No! Pretend we can't speak English. Don't worry, I got this. This could be very taxing on the mind, especially for someone dealing with anxiety. There's like edit. There's like horror music edited in here. There's ambient, spooky horror music. Although the emotion anxiety was never explored through the first movie, we did have another emotion called fear. However, I'd like to highlight the darkness of the teacher's rule. The Riley darkness? is only 11 years old, yet she has to stand up and publicly say something on the spot? Uh, uh, this seems like it's a person... I mean, like, have you... Uh, if this is a genuine video that was made genuinely, like, w w has this person lived their life at all? I mean, this is like complaining about this as if it's a problem with the movie, and really what it is, it just seems like it might be potentially a commentary that sometimes people who have troubles speaking or processing it, their emotions or whatever, someone with autism or something, might kind of be put on the spot by people in real life, and, you know, maybe that's like a thing you, you have to get used to or something. I mean, that that kind of feels like that's the point here, that she's supposed to be overwhelmed. I don't, I don't understand how this is a problem. 
She didn't have time to prepare oh, a speech, this. nor does she have any idea how her classmates will view her based on what oh, she and has to say. People are saying this is also normal. I, I was, I was one of those weirdo homeschooled people for most of my most of my uh, childhood. So, I, I guess I wouldn't also know necessarily. But I mean, this does seem like a very common thing. And I mean, in general, when you're in in your in living your life, you're eventually going to have to be fucking called up to talk to a dentist or something, and you 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 can't be like complaining about. Oh my god, I wasn't ready. You have to be aware that I'm not a. I'm not okay with that. I will talk to you when I'm good and ready. God damn it. I mean this this is like this feels like a joke, but we see how entitled people are these days. I I I don't know. Maybe people. Maybe people really think that the world needs to bend to you to the to the extent where you don't even you can't be expected to speak in public ever because you have like a brain thing. There's something slightly up with your brain and you you can't therefore therefore it's unrealistic of this movie to suggest that I would ever need to talk in public. That's just nonsense. That would never happen. Mommy doesn't make me talk when I go out. This causes an array of emotions and she ends up crying. At this point in the film, Riley had moved states, houses, and even friends. This would bear on any child's mind and psyche. Oh, hang on. We want Sangi to look like he's in class. Yeah, I guess it does. He he already kind of does look like he's in class, too. That's what's great about it. That's what's great about it. Hang on. Yeah, we just... um. There you go. Sangi's here. San Sangi cannot. Sangi with a bit of a weird brain tumor back here cannot believe what it cannot believe what he is witnessing right now. This is some crazy stuff. Absolutely bonkers. Just bonkers. The cluelessness of the parents and their unwillingness to understand that their daughter needs extra attention is baffling. What is your problem? Sangi, please introduce alone. yourself. Getting away from that. Another strict rule is that the parents tell her to have a good day. Have a good day at school, monkey. <laughs> Expecting her to have a great day at school. Now this may seem like an odd rule and a common phrase. An odd rule. Is that a rule? This is Riley must have a good day. That's a rule? However, with the parents' track record, I question how serious they were being here. This is gonna be some shit where it's like... You're... You are... You are forcing her to feel like she has to have a good day. Because you said to have a good day. So therefore, if she feels like she isn't having a good day, she's going to be a disappointment to you. God damn it. They require What a rule. What an awful rule these parents have. Their child must have a good day. And when she comes back home, she must report that she's had a good day. This is somewhat invasive. I'm calling child parents, services. I would excuse this. But with Riley's parents, they have shown that they are not there for their daughter when she needs them. But this wouldn't be the end of Riley's problems. After so much issues, she decided to unfortunately run away from home, believing that no one understood her. Unfortunately, which then brings me on to another crucial rule that the parents. Well, her parents have. sound really awful, so I guess it's a good thing she ran away from home. They they wished her a good day for heaven's sake. Oh. Riley is not allowed to run away from home and must be back at a certain oh. time. This is a rule that I can easily agree with. Riley made a horrible decision to leave her family due to her own misguided Oh, process. I mean, I don't know if it's t definitively autism, but there's definitely something at play with whoever made this video just being like, This is a rule. She needs to follow the rule that she can't run away from home. It's a rule. She's not allowed to run away from home. That's the rule. Uh, it, uh, there's definitely something going on there, yeah. What Riley did could have been very dangerous, and I'm glad she made it back home safe. However, this is the only instance where I say that the parents' strict rule made sense. Some would argue that their cluelessness- Kalobi is just a content farm. Well, what's the content? I don't understand. I mean, are we are we just supposed to watch this and- Is the, is the fucking wave of the future just literally just making content that's too confusing to fucking understand? Like, that's, that seems to be the play, you know? You, you, you People draw their own conclusions from it. Some people will be, uh, will, will, will like whatever their brain invents the reason for this video to be. 
you know, they'll watch it and they'll be like, oh, yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. This was a strong video that I really agree with. And then other people will watch it and they'll have negative opinions and everybody will leave a comment. So it's engagement farming. So it's just a video that makes no sense just so that we all watch it and don't understand it. I think that's what's happening. Until now is concerning. Well, her teacher hasn't even seen Riley all day. What, what was she wearing last? Do you even remember what... Riley. Oh, we Even if you look at smaller rules, earlier in the film where Riley has to stand in place and watch her parents smooch uninterrupted, why make a rule that your daughter has to stand there while you kiss? Can't you? What, what rule? I just, it's fascinating the way these people come up with these things. That they come, that like, where, where in the film is it said that that's a rule? Obviously nowhere. I mean, we all know it's not said anywhere. There's not a fucking hard and fast list of rules that are displayed in the movie that are these rules in the, the video. No, he's invented these in his brain, I guess. These rules that she follows. I, I, I just don't know, like, the, it's a real fucking special, spe a beautiful mind that has to create something like this. I, I don't know, Do man. somewhere else? If you haven't noticed it yet, many people watched Inside Out wrong. Everyone was so focused on the emotions and Riley, but what about the parents? I believe that her- Watch the movie wrong. That's a solid claim you're making right there. Her parents had a huge role to play in what was happening- it's Quite a pl her. quite a claim. The mother and father were struggling financially and were having a hard time themselves. They could have still made extra steps to spend time with their daughter. After all, Riley is a single child. That can get very lonely very- I mean, one of the rules was literally Riley must have a good day. Which is just the parents wishing her to have a nice day. So, I mean, I just... I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I'll have to watch another one of this person's video. This is how they get you. This is how they get you. Fast. I have to watch another one of the fucking videos to try and determine if this is like a troll or brain damage or some kind of a, a obtuse joke. Parents likely believe that their strict rules will help AI autism? Person. But has this really happened? We've seen time and time again Riley's unwillingness to listen. Considering that they've made so many laws for their child, it can be difficult to pinpoint which rules are actually sensible. And with Riley disobeying her parents, it's probably the last thing that the family needs. Even with the mother's manipulation and rules to get what she wants instead of considering her own child Riley's own desires. It's an all-around difficult situation for this family, and it's bordering to dysfunction. I would love it if this turned into communism. Decent production value. Or like, or like, capitalism. You know what I mean? Like, if this just in the last, like, 30 seconds of the video just took a solid pivot into, like, and that's why the Jews are trying to, uh-oh, uh-oh, you know. I mean, so far, it's they've been kept, they've kept away from that so far, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I, but the, the problem is if that happened, at least then we would know what the fuck the point of this is. Uh, I, I still, I, I think this might be some kind of very esoteric fetish. I think. I think it's on the same level as the Grounded Grounded. It's like somebody who got punished and has brain issues, uh, had it fucking mentally conflated in their brain that that punishment is like something that they I, I don't know that it's now that's something that they're into I think that's what it is I that's my guess but overrated and based on unproven psychological theories not a kids movie clearly written by some people with nihilistic tendencies Riley's parents need to adjust their rules the only valid response to their daughter's disobedience would be to let her do what she wants and have her suffer the consequences of her own actions firsthand instead of policing her with every what? aspect of her life. There could have been so many other- This is the way that I guess the parents raised this kid, like just allow him to put his face on the stove and just find out naturally that it's hot and it burns and it hurts and then don't do it next time. I guess that's the- is that kind of what he's getting at? I mean, all right. That's certainly a method, I guess, you know. Ways to let Riley handle her Probably business. not a great way yeah. to keep your let kid her alive. Hockey but... team and allow her more freedom, too. Don't force her to eat broccolis when she doesn't <laughs> want to. <laughs> Ironically, people who are forced to eat bro, well, she's a baby. Broccoli like... and vegetables when they're younger, once they get older, they all of a sudden don't want to eat those vegetables as opposed to children who are allowed to have free will. Okay, it's edited like a meme. This is a joke, right? I mean, but it can't be, though. This is just how entitled people actually are now. 
There is just probably why it's this is so tame, honestly. That's not this this is not that insane. I can super believe that there's just people now that are like Bro, how can you force your child to eat what they can't they haven't consented to eating that food, bro? You didn't get your child's consent to eat broccoli. You know, like I could, t I could definitely see that that's a thing now that like somebody would complain about to for eat sure. Whatever they want, and when they get older, they willingly choose <sighs> to eat vegetables like broccoli, etc. Not only the parents, but the teacher also needs to adjust her rules. Do not single out students who are new. This puts them in an uncomfortable position. Why are you singling out an 11 year old to talk in front of everyone when she just arrived? This guy must have like also been homeschooled. Even harder than me. Perhaps talk to her one on one. Take her aside. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, you know, um, just talk to her one on one and, you know, you just, you just, uh, you just talk to her one on one, you know, and you just you find out what's going on there and why is she so upset? What's the why is she so booty bothered about it? You know, what's going on? What's what's the problem? What's Speak your mind, Riley. Jeez, come on. Her aside, get to know her, pair her up with another classmate, one or two, but not the whole student body, whether it be ignorance or lack of empathy. Riley's parents' rules are undoubtedly strict. Ah. Uh. Ignorance or lack of empathy. I'm so confused. Are you okay, there's bluey music happening. There's more weird age gaps and shit in on this channel. Um, he has another video about Inside Out. This is Inside Out 2, and it features gender neutral bathrooms and uh, pride flags. How is it that a movie that was released all the way back in 2015 somehow now is more relevant than ever? If you're anything like me, your home feed has been filled with Inside Out 2 content. To understand why people are talking about this so much, we have to travel back- If we're anything like him, here he is with more of the broccoli scene. If we're anything like him, than chat ever. members- If you're anything like me, your home- Then your home feed might also be filled with- Videos about Riley's puberty and bisexuality in Inside Out 2. If you're anything like him, I know what kind of stuff you've got going on on your feed, people. Home feed has been filled with Inside Out 2 content. To understand why people are talking about this so much, we have to travel back in time to the early Less days. Less broccoli, of more diversity. In the original movie, we saw fear, sadness, joy, disgust, and anger. However, with the new teaser being dropped, we are seeing a lot more characters. But to understand the root of the issue and why everyone's talking about Inside Out 2, we first have to establish the root of the problem. While the original Inside I haven't heard anybody fucking talking about Inside Out 2. Um, also, I know that this movie came out first, but like, I can't look at this character without thinking about the Emoji movie. This character just looks like the Emoji Movie. Like, every character in the Emoji Movie, like, mashed together. You know? Um, but, uh, I haven't heard anybody fucking talking about this, this movie. So, I mean, maybe you just need to get a better, you know, maybe, you, maybe this is a skill issue. ...that out was successful, it prompted certain fans to question the main character Riley's gender. Going as far as to say that Riley is what? a neutral name, and she also has neutral emotions. Disney wants you to know, apparently. Oh my god, everybody, we're about to get one quarter pound heavier! That the 11 year old in this movie, you know, pre any of the changes that happen to kids as they become adults, the 11 year old is non-binary. Can you tell me more about the changes, Quarter Pounder? Please, I want to know, please tell me more from your own, in your own words, about the, 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 the changes that are, that are to come. Um, okay, so there's, like, an effort from weirdos to make this movie, like, woke or something. Sure, cool. If you're wondering why everyone's talking about Inside Out 2, there are a plethora of reasons. This is one of them. If you're wondering why people won't shut the fuck up, it's because they're stupid. There you go, that's the answer. That's the answer to a lot of stuff that happens in the world. Commenter stating, Stop trying to claim that this little girl is gender neutral. Y'all are so weird. 
while others are in agreement. Inside out of the closet. Is it possible that Pixar will go there with Inside Out 2? Many individuals that would be a great are very subtitle. fixated on who Riley actually is. I always wondered why the moms and dads were only boys or only girls, and Riley's was boys and girls. What? What? Excuse me? Wait, no, wait, excuse What the fuck does that mean? Is that... Is that saying that all of the other parents in the universe are gay except for Riley's parents? Is that what's happening? Is that saying that- is that suggesting that every other fucking couple in the movie that is shown is a gay couple except for Riley's parents? That's the only way I can make heads or tails of what the flip this comment is saying. Why does he look like a sex molester, too? This discussion may be controversial. That's like a- the only reason why people can't stop talking about inside. Oh, the people in her head? The moms and dads were only boys and girls. And Riley's was bo- Oh, oh. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, this is worded horribly. Okay, so it means that the parents have, like, I guess, uh, emotions, and they're all boys, and for the- Okay. Um. Okay, I think I get what he's- he's getting at. Why does the photo look like a- look like a- a mugshot, though? Like, this is mugshot photo. What else would this be? It's like a driver's license or a mugshot. What the fuck? Well, this I mean, I mean, what the flip? Controversial. This isn't the only reason why people can't stop talking about Inside Out 2. There's a lot of pieces to this puzzle, and you're going to have to watch this entire video to figure it out. We have to focus the whole on thing. what the emotions are. One of the emotions will be anxiety, something that a lot of people face. We all have to keep in mind the target demographic that Pixar movies usually target. With Inside Out, it kind of transcended that usual bubble of teenagers because parents and teenagers love the movie as well. However, I bring up the- Parents and teenagers love every fucking Pixar movie. What are you talking about? This point to highlight something very important. I, I have not- I would not say that this movie is particularly- Like, I don't know. I don't- I don't associate with a lot of Disney adults, but like- there are some Pixar Disney movies that are, you know, hey, this one is particularly good and interesting for people that aren't babies. And then some of them are inside out, you know? I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's a little more to it, but it's not, like, any more particularly appealing to adults than, like, fucking Incredibles or something. Many of us who watched this movie in the past, eight years ago, would have grown up significantly. Even if you were someone who was just 10 years old at the time that this movie came out, in 2023, yeah, I don't know what his point you are is. now 18 years old. You're a whole adult, man, and soon you're gonna be paying oh bills. Oh my god. This is the reason- They gave her a rainbow shirt, and that's why it's gay. Is this the new movie or the old movie? If it's the old movie, then why are people even arguing? It was right there. ...and why I think everyone's talking about Inside Out 2. See, Pixar really loved this movie. It was phenomenal. They didn't just rush they out- They gave her a fucking pride flag shirt. If they give her a trans flag shirt in the new movie, it's gonna be the funniest thing. Maybe they can make it so every shirt she has in the new movie will be like a slightly different pl pride flag, you know? Well, that'll be great. Like for one scene, she can be bisexual, but then the next scene, she can be lesbian, you know? And then the scene after that, she can have like a two-spirit thing because she met a, a native kid and she thought that was kind of cool for a week. You know? 50 million sequels one after another. Bang, bang, bang. Toy Story 1, 2, 3, and 4. Incredibles 2. Sequels have a high chance of failing, and Pixar messed up big time with Toy Story 4. Toy Story 2 and 3 were well acclaimed, however, 4 really messed it up. But yeah, I 4 is where they got woke. Digress. I believe that everyone has grown up with Riley. See, when you look at The Incredibles 1 and 2, we waited a very long time for a sequel. Just realized Dash from the fucking Incredibles has Kazuma Kiryu's haircut. I just noticed that. <laughs> this is... He's just got the same haircut. It's just blonde. Well, the first thing... Our, our, charitably, you could call him Ryuji Gota, but like a, cut a little short at the back. Incredibles was released in 2004, while the sequel was released in 2018. That is a huge gap, even bigger than the Inside Out gap. 
However, when they released The Incredibles 2, they started off immediately after The Incredibles 1. Some people thought that this was a letdown. We didn't see the characters grow up on screen. What However, the fuck is your point, dude? I don't understand. <laughs> like, I, I guess he's trying to say that they want that it, for Inside Out they should have a time skip or something. It looks like they aren't though. Like she's still gonna be like a couple years older. I mean, a bit of a time skip, I guess, but not a particularly big one. I don't know. A movie like Inside Out has the same problem that a movie like. That, that like a persona game has rather where i'm left like okay this is cool and all but this is such an, in, an interesting concept that i would rather see done by like i don't know I, I, an hbo like if if the wire had personas you know like like i would rather see adults involved in this scenario rather than a bunch of fucking high schoolers personally you know so i would rather see some i would love to see a movie like inside out but it's just about, like, an adult Riley who has to deal with her various mental illnesses uh, brought, a, brought about by watching Scott Pilgrim at a young age and getting too many ideas. And, uh, and you know, that would be a much more interesting film, frankly. But they have to make it about her as a kid for some reason. For their voice actors' voices kind of sounded aged a little bit. Now, it seems that Pixar is doing something completely different, and this begs the question. Is this the reason why everyone's talking about? What is one of those chat member? You can't be like that. Fuck inside off. Out too. So you know what? You're one of those. How about that, cunt? So far, I've given you two one possibilities of, of why I think people can't stop talking about it. But I'd like to ask you, the viewer, what makes you so excited to see Inside Out Two? Yeah, he's saying nothing. We're like half. We're almost halfway through, and he's basically said nothing about this movie. Uh, like, this really is content farming, I guess, because it's, like, just over the time that is needed for ads. So, I I, assu I guess this is just... This must be, like, an AI script that he just, like, padded out the fucking runtime a bunch. What part of your life did you watch the first one? And where are you now? My third hypothesis of why everyone's talking about Inside Out 2. I mean, I get why adult personas don't make as much sense as the high school ones. I'm just saying they already did that at one point, and people like that game. So I feel like they could do it again, you know. It's because they're using it's something that, it's not that, that everyone crazy. can relate to. Or at least to. remake the fucking second persona game or something, I don't know. Anxiety. That is a grown-up issue. There's not many kids running around with anxiety that are at least aware of that condition. So, I, like, do people need this movie to exist, too? I mean, I'm like, I, I'm watching, like, oh my, oh, she's gonna deal with anxiety. I don't know. Can, is this gonna, like, hypothetically, what is this gonna be? Like, the version of Big Mouth that isn't, like, awful? I guess, because this just seems like there's a lot of other stuff already that's, like, basically this same concept. I mean, Persona being one of them, frankly. But, yeah, I mean, Big Mouth, fucking, there's plenty of media, I, I don't know, this, this, this was a somewhat an interesting concept in, like, 2015. The only thing the sequel's gonna do is, now she's anxious, too. Well, it seemed like she was anxious when she had to fucking say her name or whatever in, in the first movie. So, I mean, so she's anxious now also. Great, cool, good movie, good sequel. Awesome so what sequel. Pixar is communicating to us is that this is not going to be some baby movie. Isn't it funny how in the trailer they have anxiety introducing baby themselves? Movie. However, when you think about it, someone with anxiety is not going to go out of their way to introduce themselves to five people. That's a lot of people, and that's coming from someone with some anxiety. Personally, when I saw the first Inside Out, I was really young. And I really fell in love with this movie. I Honestly, can see that. I can't wait to see what will happen to Riley. I think the sequel has the possibility of working. I just hope and so, so how are we how are we uh, like over half just over halfway through this Jesus Christ oh adult moments and oh oh man what a great channel this is what a great channel this is curse words in animated movies what who okay so wh I guess this is for children who are like getting curious about things is that what this channel is it's like kids who are getting a little too curious about the loud house is that is that what's happening 
So I guess there's like a whole series on age gap crushes. R right. Blood in Pixar movies. All right. Well, I mean, that's this person. Kalobi Productions. Uh, I'm not... Bleh, 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 bleh. No, wait. Billy McNeely's here now. Okay. I'm not... Uh, I'm not really sure uh, about uh, this channel. I mean, I still... I can't tell... Why everyone's talking about Nimona? Gay. Ah, oh, I see. Well, I yeah, I can't. I can't tell. I I guess this is just for uh children to watch. I I don't know. I I would assume, oh children or you know, or pedophiles. Let's just hide. Saying he's there. He is. He's down there. Um. Well, that'll do it for for that fellow. Um. Uh. We'll move along from there. Um. That actually reminds me of another person that I wanted to... Oh, I think it's this one. Oh, it is. This is great. This is a wonderful channel. So you know how I said, wouldn't it be great if this video randomly shifted into being about, like, capitalism or something? This is Literate Machine. And, um... Yeah, um... The, uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall and the Rise of the Alt-Right defund the paw patrol and paw patrol is conservative propaganda um <clears throat> doctor who kerblam and the problem of capitalism a mind forever voyaging into neoliberalism steve moretsky and the video game that saw it all coming um Surprisingly, no videos about Disco Elysium, but Doom, Mist, and the War for the Soul of Video Games. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to involve capitalism. Uh, well, let's find out about Paw Patrol, people. Let's find out about what it means to be a 35-year-old who's jacking it to Paw Patrol, but at least we're not being racist or transphobic or something. <laughs> Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Round Adventure Bay. Here we are. Consider, if you will, a town. You've never seen a hospital in this town. You've never seen a school. Instead, prepubescent children work full-time jobs without adult oversight. It okay, it's a cartoon for children. It's never really occurred to you that not one of them seems to have parents. Okay, the yeah, but it's a cartoon for children. Political apparatus of the town. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Hey, buddy, learn to edit your videos. What's this? This is how... I wasn't going to mention it the first time, but it's now happened twice, at least. At least this is... This is at least the second time that I've seen a black frame. How hard is it? It's, like, harder to leave in a black frame. With most video editors, they will snap your fucking clips together. So it's like more of an effort for you to have left in a black frame somehow. I, I, okay. It's just entirely Good. of a mayor, so self-aggrandizing she erects a solid gold statue of her pet chicken right in the center of town, a move reminiscent of the dogs of the brutal dictator of Turkmenistan. Otherwise, if you're wondering where the town budget goes... Is this his fucking avatar? Wow. He's like a smug uh, guy with, like, science, and <clears throat> he's got a bubble that he can breathe his own farts in with, and he's wearing a bow tie. You know, whatever, whatever outfit he's got on, he's also got on a bow tie. He's one of those. Direct your gaze he's, to it. He's one of those. A tower. You can't miss it. On a defensible island with a single bridge, a tower topped with a retractable periscope so that it might... Sauron like keep watch over the Sauron -like. world. Sauron like disguised around its outsides and from within its cavernous This is like somebody saw the the channel Noah called Well Gervais and got just the worst the worst idea. They just got the worst influence. Um why are you okay, I'm assuming that there's going to be a point. I mean, I assumedly the point is that the police are bad uh defund the police and this show has police in it. And so teaching children that the police exist is uh, conservative propaganda, I guess. That's, 
You know, actually, on second thought, it might be smarter for him to just stay talking about the show like the like he is now. Maybe maybe once he actually starts to get into what the fuck the video is actually about, it might get a lot worse, actually. Subterranean garages pour forth a bewilderingly massive fleet of vehicles, cars, trucks, ATVs, construction equipment, hovercraft, helicopters, boats, submarines, snowmobiles, and jetpacks sporting aviators. And all of it, for some reason is under the command of a 10-year-old boy and his team of trained puppies. Every concert in town, every parade, every celebration seems to center around this circus-like emergency and law enforcement crew. Look now, there's an underage Dalmatian behind the wheel of a fire truck with the entire team on board. Oh, the fact that it's an underage Dalmatian, that's the part that makes it weird. If it was a normal Dalm, if it was a grown Dalmatian, then that would be fine, but it was a it was a, like a baby Dalmatian, so yeah, they can't they can't they can't drive a truck for shit. I mean, truck that would expect. plow through cars in its way if the roads weren't conveniently empty. So when so far the theme of tonight's stream has been people vastly overanalyzing cartoons for literal babies. Uh, uh, well, okay, the other one's not literally for babies, maybe for literal children at least. This one's for literal babies, though. Like, like, pr like fucking toddlers. Um, and I mean, yeah, I guess, have you, like, you could make this exact same video so far. This is like a parody, though. I mean, you could make the exact same video about, like, the, 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 the Bugs Bunny and Tweety Bird show. Like, why is it that in this whole world, the only characters we ever seem to see are Bugs and his weird animal friends, and occasionally people with guns who want to kill Bugs Bunny? What's up with that? I mean, like, I don't know, just make, making, like, yeah, it's a, it's a cartoon. I don't know what the fuck, what are you getting at? I mean, if you want to argue that the show is making children like the police i okay i think that's kind of stupid but like fine there's maybe something to be said there at least you know it's like you want to call it like propaganda i mean i think again i think it's stupid but whatever it's trying whatever this is trying to get at by like over analyzing what the fucking like mechanisms the political mechanisms of paw patrolville I think I think this guy needs to fucking settle down. Never the team came through, as if cleared in advance just for them. Look, the Dalmatian has hopped out of his truck, doing his work as the town's only medical provider. A woman has an injured leg. Voice activated, from the dog's backpack emerges a screen, which flickers to life as it says this is this one step away from trying to analyze the politics of Pong. Uh, there is, I mean... Shit, like, you could. I mean, <laughs> okay, Pong, it's two sides battling for control. Hey, it makes more sense than talking about the politics of Paw Patrol. I'm going to be honest, Pong, Pong is a, be a vastly better political allegory than Paw Patrol has a, it could ever be. Fully Come on now, X -ray. Paw Paganda. To the leg without the least regard for safety, probably ensuring everyone around will get cancer. Why does a relatively small town need such an overfunded rescue and law enforcement operation outfitted with enough military surplus to defend a small nation? Because the town is constantly under attack, primarily by the mayor of a neighboring town, who, aided by his underage nephew and crew of kittens, will twirl his mustache and steal anything. Okay, what? Well, okay. Okay. The guy is white and blonde. It can't be, like, foreigners. It can't be, like... The guy seems to be rich, too. So he's, like, it's. it seems to be, like, anti, you know, bourgeoisie or whatever. If you want to look at this from some kind of wacky fucking internet socialist lens, I, it, it seems like this guy is, like, the... Isn't this guy the fucking... Aren't we... Don't we... Don't we want to fucking defund these people, too? Don't we want to, like, eat the rich or something? So, this guy seems like a good villain. I mean, right? What's wrong with this guy as a villain? The underage nephew and crew of kittens will twirl his mustache and steal anything that isn't nailed down. And why not? 
He knows he won't be punished, not really. After all, the show must go on. No one ages here. Nothing changed. Oh my god, you're such a fucking loser, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is so fucking stupid. Oh, it's like while well, I was playing through uh, Infinite Wealth and I'm just thinking like, yeah, I guess, I mean, spoilers for that game, it's all over the marketing, but... Kiryu has fucking cancer, and so, like, it's, it's like, they, they tried to give him a retirement in the sixth game, and they just couldn't, so they have to bring him back, because he's such a draw, mark, because the meta game angle of, he, putting Kazuma Kiryu on the box art sells copies, and people associate the series with him, so we have to keep bringing him back, so the only way feasibly that they can give the fucking guy a break is by literally just having him die. So I'm sitting there playing it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's kind of fucked up, you know, narratively that that's the way that this has to work. And it's like, this guy has just finally occurred, that's just finally occurred to him, like, well... The show must go on, there's no consequences. HE DOESN'T EVEN GET PUNISHED FOR IT! This is basically the Family Guy video, but it's just angrier. Or it's just less angry and it's more political. After all, the show must go on. Oh my god, I can't believe fiction. Mmm, yes. Mmm, yes. He's very sneering, isn't he? Look at his fucking little avatar. <laughs> I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> no one ages here. Nothing changes. Oh my god, it's like every cartoon and show ever made, dude. Wow, nobody's ever had this theory... Nobody's ever had this analysis of, like, South Park or Family Guy or Simpsons or fucking any other series ever. No, it's you. You're the first. Good. Good original concept here. Except the emergency and law enforcement services ever expanded... Socialist Mike Staclasa. ...military-grade equipment continuing to pile up around, within, and beneath the tower. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we're, we've set up the world of Paw Patrol, everybody. Now we get into, like, the actual meat and potatoes of the video. We get into the politics of it, it looks like. Okay. So you've, you've, you've firmly established that the world of Paw Patrol is, uh, it's a fucking cartoon. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Gotcha. Created by a toy company literally called Spinmaster, Paw Patrol continues the tradition of toy commercials as TV shows that dates back to the Reagan era repeal of regulations regarding product placement in children's shows. That was Reagan, huh? Ah. Oh. So in other words, the reason why we have an entire fucking world filled with consumers who won't let their fucking, you know, their action figures stop being relevant. That's, that's, uh, that goes back to Reagan then? Interesting. I never knew that one. That's... Actually, a very fundamental new piece of user lore, everybody. I didn't, I didn't know about that. <laughs> We're learning some news here. That's great. This single act resulted in an onslaught of shows based on toy lines and existing for the express purpose of selling them, including Transformers, My Little Pony, and G.I. Joe. Thus, we should at all times keep in mind the true express purpose of Paw Patrol is to function as the center of a marketing effort for an ever-expanding line and of merch. This is another thing that's like, wow, I can't believe... I, it, like, I feel sorry for this person. They made this channel. This person's probably like, what, like seven, six, you know, may, probably an adult, probably like 18, 19, maybe 20 or 20. I mean, I don't know. But like, probably kind of young and... Like, their mind is still being blown by the concept that most cartoons are just advertisements. Like, yeah, I know, it's a real fucking shocker. Just wait until you learn about the gendering of fucking deodorant having no real fucking reason to to happen. But, you know, other than for some reason it makes money. Just wait until he gets to that one. He'll have to make a whole second channel about that one. Nice. Indeed. The most remarkable thing about Paw Patrol as a TV show compared to other shows of its type is just how unremarkable it is. It's not merely anodyne, it's actively backwards. Anodyne. I'm not sure I've ever seen another show quite so unexamined and unreconstructed. The lead human character is a white boy, and the whole <laughs> group of puppies are all boys except one. He's playing a fucking fat boy. Yeah, where's the exaggerated swagger of Paw Patrol? Come into the on same self-fulfilling stereotypes of toy makers. We was Paw Patrol. Let's let's make it happen. 
boys don't want girl cooties in their entertainment, and white people won't tune into shows led by non-white people. Thus, shows aimed at boys or even cross-gender audiences will tokenize both boys and BIPOC. And of course, BIPOC. the girl puppy's color scheme is pink, because girl, and her femininity is signal- I, You know, I don't think anybody has ever said BIPOC as a joke. That's the sad part, is like, I hear someone say BIPOC, and you think that that's like, oh, somebody's just being funny. No, I don't think anybody would even bother saying BIPOC. It's like you'd say Latinx or something to be like a joke, to like to make fun of this type of person. No, BIPOC seems too legit. I think this person's legit. There's not a, there's, this is, oh man. Oh, I really hope that they have some friends or something that can, that can like, t oh, by the way, I hate this dog. Uh, fuck this dog. Look at this stupid fucking dog. It's got, like, eyebrows? Why does it have eyebrows? It's a dog! It has, like, Billy Hatcher hair. It, I, this dog is stu- I don't like this dog. ...by extra-large eyelashes, as if puppies use lash colors and eyeliner. As per Minnie Mouse, Daisy Duck, and so on, the boy designs are the default, while the girl designs are boy designs with added lashes, bows, and other extra signals. Oh my god, it's just- <laughs> love when I pause and it's just like his tiny little face in a, in a circle. That's good. Uh, I It's it's like watching a, a feminist frequency video again. Like watching somebody who just, you know, their mind is being fucking blown as we speak by the concept that like a lot of female characters are just like the boy design with a fucking bow and pink. Amazing. Wait till he wait till he makes his whole video about Ms. Pac-Man. Oh, don't even get him started. Jesus Christ. Of the main cast, there are two token non-white characters, both of whose ethnic identity has no bearing whatever on their personality. Yeah, or characters who were designed like a, over a hundred years ago too. So background. The ostensibly black Mayor Goodway plays Washington. And all of these people that are just like weird racists, like they go into this discussion of a cartoon. And they're, you know, they think that they're being all, like, progressive or whatever, but they're just like, And this one's white, and this one's white, and this dog might be white, and this lady's black, but, but she's not very dark, though! Uh, uh, and this one's white! Like, dude, Jesus fucking Christ, it's Paw Patrol. What is wrong with you? It's literally Paw Patrol. What the fuck? Face in hoedowns. A style of music literally popular. Ostensibly the black. <laughs> black music in the 1920s. Goodway was even played by a white actress. Oh my god. Seven, a form of voice acting blackface. Voice. Performer you Voice acting blackface. <laughs> oh, no, but people do. People do get really mad about that, though. People do get really mad about that. Uh. Like the lady who plays um, fucking Diane from uh, BoJack Horseman being like, I shouldn't have been cast because I'm white. It's like ironically, of course, making making more of an more attention for herself and not some other like fucking Vietnamese actress or something, but just more. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I know. I guess you don't want that. You don't want the voice blackface. You don't never. You never want that. That's bad. That's not good. That's never good. Me. Never. The other non-white major character. She doesn't seem to have much personality to speak of at all. The main villain, Mayor Humdinger, meanwhile, is a Mayor Humdinger. It's like, it, this is one of those scenarios where, and like this is even worse too, because this is on such a more. Like, you watch somebody like, um, you know, you watch somebody like Dogs Eating Dog 6 who's got, like, super autism, and he's, and, and he's, um, and, and he's, like, overly critically fucking analyzing, like, little kids on the internet who are being mean to him or whatever, and he's talking about, like, super dark Piplup, and, you know, it makes me wonder, like, does he ever stop... And just like st like realize how fucking silly this all is, but that's like a guy with like a lot of problems, and you know it's a different situation. This is a fucking person who's trying to like analyze this show on some kind of critical fucking like deep political level, and you don't stop and realize you don't ever like. There's not a moment there where you're like writing the script for this, and you get to Mayor Humdinger, and just like maybe just. 
I don't know. I mean, at the very least, take a take a little pause and like rub your eyes and and like a sigh and then just continue. Like maybe at least that, like something. You have to recognize how stupid this is. This he stereotype straight out of vaudeville with the effeminate mannerisms historically linked closely with loose morals and cowardice. The show is, in other words, yes. mired in moldering old tropes without the least self-examination or apparent knowledge of the larger discourse that's been going on for decades now. Where many other programs actively tilt away from this sort of thing, from Sesame Street to Bluey, and more progressive programs like Steven Universe actually work to undermine them. So in other words, Paw Patrol is based. Them. Paw Patrol embraces them enthusiastically. Paw Patrol is not as bad as fucking Steven Universe. Oh man, you got my glowing endorsement. the tiniest bit of irony. But then, irony doesn't really exist in the world of Paw Patrol. Where SpongeBob SquarePants crammed irony into every subversive frame of nautical nonsense, an adventurous Paw Patrol joke will at best consist of a pun. While SpongeBob characters might have complex, ambivalent emotions, Sandy the Squirrel's simultaneous care for and annoyance with SpongeBob, for example. So now we're getting into like the oh man, hang on. There there you go. That's perfect. Um now we're getting into the like actual complaint of about Paw Patrol as a show, I guess. Which is that it's like lazy or it, like the writing is bad. It's not as bad it's not as good as something like SpongeBob. It's not creative. It's not ironic or critical of the world or anything but spongebob's clearly aiming for a higher fucking demographic than spun than like paw patrol paw patrol i mean i'm sure there were shows at the same time as early good when spongebob was still you know good early spongebob there were probably still a lot of shows that were just insipid trash for for babies too but you don't remember them so why i mean this is a fucking terrible video. There's no room for such complexity in Adventure Bay. And you may argue that the lack of complexity is due to the target age group, but SpongeBob doesn't exactly skew younger. No, in Paw Patrol, people are either good and trying to do good things, or they're bad and trying to do bad things. Even when characters should be annoyed, Marshall slamming into and knocking over the other pups in This is Mr. Exit. Every episode, for example, no such annoyance materializes. The presumptuous Mr. Exit. There's no room for negative emotions here. And while the characters in the- The malodorous Mr. Exit. PJ Masks, for example, might learn and grow with a proper character arc over the course of an episode, and villains sometimes even switch sides on a temporary or permanent basis, there's absolutely no possibility of this in Paw Patrol. At least that one looks like it's also a show for babies. At best, a character might learn to have more confidence in themselves. You know, there is something to be said for, again, like, don't, let's not, let's not all do the fucking thing where we're like, well, it's just for kids, bro. It doesn't need to have a brain. The people that write it don't need to give a shit, you know? Like, yeah, it would maybe, I mean, I think it's maybe fair to say that the show, I mean, I don't know, obviously I haven't watched any of it, but like, you know, it's a good thing in general to hold... Uh, uh, media to the standard that it should have like some fucking I don't know talent behind it you know what I'm you know what I'm saying like the basic complaint that it's kind of you know bland and and shitty is like maybe not ho a, a horrible complaint I mean again it is just a show for babies but there's probably baby shows that are better than Paw Patrol I mean I don't know it doesn't look like a very good show like I, I, like, I haven't seen much from Paw Patrol, but, like, they show this show here. Arc over the course of like, the, this episode. PJ Masks, and I mean. villains sometimes even switch sides on a temporary or permanent basis. Yeah, like, there's, basis. there's, like, a little bit more going on here. It looks, like, a little bit better. There's and absolutely no possibility of this in Paw Patrol. At Paw best. Patrol looks so fucking bland. It, it's so cheap looking. And, like, I, I have no trouble believing this show is just, like, really garbage it's probably a lot it's probably trash the character might learn to have more confidence in themselves at first glance paw patrol isn't the most obvious show at which to level the accusation of copaganda <laughs> it's not about a police force per se at first glance 
It's not Law and Order, Blue Bloods, or Brooklyn Nine-Nine, where a sympathetic portrayal of a police department is built into the show's premise. Only Chase even has a police theme, while the other dogs have such inoffensive occupations as construction worker, firefighter, ocean rescuer, or, strangely, recycling truck driver. And much or of what girl. they do falls into the category of search and rescue operations, as opposed to law enforcement. Even when Chase does get the spotlight, he's often doing such... I like the idea that this is... I mean... Cops do that sort of stuff, too. I mean, not maybe as much as, like, a firefighter or whatever, but this is clearly just showing, like, yeah, I mean, it's it's like rescue rangers or something. It's, oh my god, cat stuck in a tree, we gotta save the fucking... You know, like it's 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 not exactly going into the fucking bureaucratic depths of the police department or something. Unglamorous things as directing traffic or laying down traffic cones. In the early episodes in particular, the pups were more likely to help baby turtles cross a busy road or find a lost elephant calf than do battle with criminals. I actually talked about the Paw Patrol in my previous episode about superheroes and the police where I reference the turnaround in Season 5, where the characters are exposed to a mysterious meteor and are granted superpowers. In that episode, I focused on how Chase the Police Dog is a model of what we imagine policing should be like. Helpful, selfless, <sighs> interested in lawfulness and justice without prejudice or rancor. This is copaganda. No minorities are beaten by the cop dog. That's true. This mayor lady or whatever, whoever she is, she better, she better not, she better not get on the wrong side of the cop dog, you know. However, I didn't at all touch on why it's a problem for the police to be portrayed this way so consistently throughout media. They're frequently lumped in with firefighters, for example, mm. as real heroes. Meanwhile, heroes. other workers, no less heroic, like EMS, don't get the same treatment and definitely don't get anything like the pay remaining criminally underpaid Does this guy also talk about horse cock i mean i don't know the only way to know about that is to keep watching them i guess overworked police you might the... start talking about dog cock and that's presented as just another arm of the municipal services that keep us all safe which is of course what they're supposed to be and yet the police's remit is different from that of firefighters trash collectors or construction workers the police have... Oh, yeah, construction worker is a really weird one to have involved in that. That is strange. And re recycling? I mean... <clears throat> you know, like, arguably a garbage truck person maybe would be, like, part of that, I guess. Not really. Not, no. I, I, it's a very... I don't know. It's But it's all just a bunch of different professions that kids could have someday, I guess. I don't know. Are we just supposed to pretend the police don't exist? We're supposed to lie to our children about Santa being real and also lie to them and pretend the police aren't real. That's the only way to raise a child correctly. And also never ever make them eat broccoli. Unique powers over others, like the right to detain, imprison, and use violence. And the problem with giving any group power over others is that you have to be sure they use it responsibly. That kind of authority, after all, will attract exactly the sort of people most willing to abuse it. I'm not going to rehash the list of police brutality right. cases over the decades, not going to once more subject uh, you to horrifying videos like the ones that set off the waves of protests last year. Yeah, I, um... It, oh, man. There are a lot of people who get a little too... Not every problem in the world needs to be solved by you, dude. You know what I mean? Like... There's so many fucking people that just, like, wow, yeah, congrats on fucking comparing, congrats on talking about, like, police brutality deaths and stuff, uh, in your video about Paw Patrol, man, you've really changed the fucking, you've really changed the conversation here, uh, in more, in more ways, probably not in the way that you were thinking you would, but... Yeah, I love the, the long period here between the tw 1922 and 1951 with no c police brutality. There was a great period there. There were some other things that were going on historically in that period that were not so great. But 
you know, other than that, no police brutality. That's you got to give you got to give that period of time one 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 thing at least. There was not a lot of police brutality. If you want that sort of thing, it's not hard to find. But I want you to consider something. Derek Chauvin was recently convicted after being filmed murdering George Floyd on camera. Jesus but there Christ. were three other police officers on the scene with him who have also been arrested. Did he just censor the word police? Is that what we're is that what we're on now? I the, maybe this is just his audio fucked up. I haven't noticed him, he did it before. But he might have just censored the word police and are awaiting trial. Why didn't one of them pull Chauvin off while he knelt on the man's neck for 9 minutes while he begged for his life and asked for his mother? Well, we know why. Uh -huh. Police who issue complaints about other officers are called rats. As if the police forces were the very... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of reform in the police department, and they probably shouldn't have let that guy kill George Floyd. What does this have to do with fucking Paw Patrol, dude? What the fuck? Now we're talking about Serpico? And meanwhile, on television, we have show after show where the police are not only the incorruptible good guys, but often have to work outside the system in order to mete out justice. Yeah, well, that's why you, uh, that's why you, that's why you, you know, you, you play Yakuza instead, where in, instead you have heroic criminals. It balances the scales. You got evil police and heroic criminals. It's, it's perfect. Please sometimes just have to rough a guy up to get the truth. Wouldn't you? After all, torture works. Spoiler, it doesn't. It wasn't that long ago that New York police officers abused Abner Luima by sodomizing great um sure man uh defund the paw patrol um once again this is literate machine and um loki and how conservatives become fascists here star trek into socialism how will capitalism end the orville edward bernstein and what is to be done man what is to be done truly P Pixar's soul finding yourself under capitalism. Boy, this guy sure, this communist sure supports and watches a lot of media made by big evil corporations like Disney. There sure are a lot of reviews for things like Star Trek and Loki and Soul and a lot, a lot of stuff like that. It's funny. It's weird that you don't, hmm. Uh,. Okay, well, I'm I'm fascinated to know how you think Marvel is not only not woke, but, like, the reverse of that, I guess? Let's find out how Loki is, like, anti-woke. It's gonna turn your kids into conservatives. It's gonna- it's gonna make the frogs, uh, hate the gays. Okay, thank God we got a trigger warning, everybody. I'm now going to be mentally prepared and on edge constantly at all times, waiting for those things to come up so that I can be prepared for when they come up so that I won't have to think about them. Thank God. The story you might have heard before. Loki, Prince of Asgard, has always been smarter and more capable than his older brother Thor. And yet their father, King Odin, perpetually favors the lunkhead and intends to abdicate and make Thor king in his place. Why should a lesser be raised up before him? There must be some ulterior motive, a motive that finally becomes clear when he discovers he's not Odin's biological son at all, but instead one of the enemy frost giants. Yeah, okay, like, I gotta be... I can't believe I'm saying this, but bro, you're, you're a real shitty socialist, dude. Try harder. I'm sorry, you're over here reciting the entire corporate doctrine of fucking bourgeois Disney Marvel Drek, and you want me to believe that you're a comrade, dude? Nah, nah, -uh, sir. You don't get invited to the socialist dinner parties. Fie, I say. And now it all makes sense. He was secretly hated because of left wing dork in the house race. But this reversal of the natural order will not stand. He will take what is rightfully his by any means necessary. He will heroically stand against the darkness. His first plan fails, but he finds a new- Bro, I literally don't even care. <laughs> he has to do this, I guess, in every video. It has to be like, 
the whole fucking backstory of the show. I guess that makes sense. All right, I gotta click on a video game one because it's me. Let's find out about the soul of video games. This is Literate Machine. I'm Eric Rosenfield. Oh, Doom. No, you really don't want to say your full name with opinions like these, dude. Missed and the war for the soul of video games. In the 1990s, Doom and Mist fought a war for the soul of video games. Mist sold almost twice as many copies. Within 10 years, the entire industry had remodeled itself around Doom. The seeds of the war had been sown at the... Okay, so how... What could this... I... I'm... F... I'm... I, I'm flabbergasted right now trying to guess what this video will be about. Doom, Mist, and the War for the Soul of Video Games. So, I guess Doom is a game that's all of... I, okay. Mist has no combat. Doom is all about killing. So, is that what it's going to be? They're both first person, mid-90s, whatever. It's going to be something like that, I guess. It's going to be something like... But how is it going to factor in the weirdo fucking anti-capitalist, like, socialist bullshit? Uh, I, something, I, the, 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 the proles want to buy games with shooting because the masses, I don't know, I, we'll have to find out, we'll have Dawn to find out. Dawn of personal computing. As has been widely reported, computer programming was once the domain of women. Positions descended from their earlier roles as human computers, solving mathematical problems for corporate and governmental work. Labor Those were the days! As computer programming became more complicated, it gradually shifted to men, aided by personality tests used by employers that prioritized stereotypically men. As it got too difficult for women with their tiny, feeble brains to comprehend it, men had to step in and take over and, and give them a cookie for their efforts. Masculine traits and increasingly antisocialness. Still, Women in computing were common until the late 70s when personal computers began to appear. These personal computers were marketed primarily towards boys. Parents bought them for boys. And as a result, computer science classes began to fill up with those same boys who had grown up with the machines. Marketing towards boys accelerated following the video game console. Literally, as it got harder, women stopped. <laughs> Uh, you didn't have to phrase it that way, dude. I don't know if that's how it happened, but that's certainly how he phrased it. Yeah. Crash of 1983. Then dominant Atari had flooded the market with cheap and poorly produced games, and the result was a loss in consumer confidence, paired with the idea that the new multi-purpose personal computers had made dedicated consoles obsolete. And so it was when, in 1985, the Japanese company Nintendo decided to bring their new entertainment system to the North American market they packaged it with a little toy robot that would follow the player character around on the screen. And this robot had a penis. Screen, so that it could be marketed not as a game console at all, but as a toy. The console migrated out of electronics. I swear to God, if this video tells me about Doki Doki Panic being Mario 2, I will not do anything really, but it will be in a notable moment that I will get a chuckle out of. Electronic shops and into toy stores. As anyone who's entered a toy store knows, the toy market is starkly gendered, with girl products in their rows of bright pink cordoned off from that of boys. I just, just like, I guess there's a lot of stupid people out there that need to watch a video like this that just tells them very basic, obvious shit. It's, rem it's reminding me so much of Feminist Frequency. It's like, why do you... How dumb are you? Yeah, they gender the fucking toys. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's like... A lot of the shit in the last video would be stuff, like, a lot of weird little points that he made about, like, this is a show, after all. They can't have consequences. It's, like, it's just the most, like, first entry-level fucking, like, points you can make about a subject like this. And, and I mean, you, I, I don't know. I haven't heard much that's better than those points. Nintendo's research said that boys played more games than girls, and so, as had happened with personal computers, they marketed their products exclusively to boys, creating a feedback loop attracting more boys while excluding girls. It wasn't that girls couldn't enjoy these games. It was that the company told both kids and their parents that this was a boy's toy for boys. 
By 1989, when the Sega Genesis launched in North America, boys who had grown up on the Nintendo were now hitting puberty. So Sega this is literally a feminist frequency video. I mean, I mean, I'm, I was kind of joking about that before, but now I'm recognizing. I mean, this is almost literally what her videos were. It's like this kind of truncated history told in the service of spinning a very particular narrative uh y you know uh but i guess this is talking what's funny is this is talking more about that if you watch the stream where i looked at the feminist frequency videos from like a decade ago uh i kept complaining that she never addressed basically this which is that the games were targeted more towards boys and why was that so I guess this is actually the video that I was looking for, actually. Behind all of the very basic, obvious shit, maybe he'll actually have my answers for me. Maybe it's also Reagan's fault. They marketed their product as the cool game system, not like that childish Nintendo 64. The Genesis wasn't just for boys. It was for the kind of boys who didn't like little kid things or icky girl things or boring things. Alpha boys. Their mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog, perhaps tried a bit too hard to seem cool while embodying the fast action ethos of the company, but all the ads and marketing would prime the pump for what was to come. Marketing to boys became marketing to pubescent boys, became marketing to stereotypes of pubescent boys, to make things fast and loud and free of thoughtfulness. Masculinity turned mm. to toxic masculinity quick, and oh by the God. 90s, all the game systems were flooded with ads that- Masculinity turned to toxic masculinity. Sonic turned to Bubsy. It was a terrible time. Played up stereotypes and lurid pandering to the hilt. A Sega ad advertised a beautiful oh, naked oh, woman oh. you wouldn't notice under all these game screenshots. In a Neo Geo ad, a model in lingerie pouts at the camera while her boyfriend plays video games in the back. Would you believe that the gamer industry is, is male dominated? I don't believe it. Here's Pokimane with the weather. Crowned with the text, I remember when he couldn't keep his hands off of me. A particularly infamous... Women don't deserve rights, Tails! Reading, the more you play with it, the harder it gets. In 1989, there was even a PlayStation TV ad in which a character is shown having to choose between playing manly games or being totally whipped by his girlfriend. In 1992, the Genesis gained two titles that would make it infamous and mark the natural result of the prurient bro-boy marketing strategy. Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Originally in the arcades, really Night Mortal Trap? Kombat was a fighting game whose characters literally pulled skeletons. I don't think, think Night Trap was really a game. Like, Mortal Kombat was a game that was both, like, popular and successful and, you know, well-made and also really uh, controversial. Night Trap was just controversial and then it kind of got some buzz, but I don't think it was, like, a popular game necessarily. It wasn't exactly setting the fucking world on fire like but like Mortal Kombat at that point in time. Skeletons out of bodies amid geysers of blood. Night Trap involved the player watching live surveillance of a family no, home where five Night teenage Trap. girls disappeared. While tame by today's standards, the game's focus on watching young women in scanty outfits get assaulted. Well, it's well made if you don't try to play like the single player mode of Mortal Kombat 2. I'm pretty sure that's... Isn't that like impossible? I, I think it's... I think it's at least extremely weirdly hard. I I remember that the I think Mortal Kombat 2 in particular is like kind of unfair the the story mode of that, well story mode, quote unquote, the single player by vampires became caught up in one of the periodic video game moral panics and led to Senate hearings. While console games fled fast into a single I really hate this guy's avatar though. It's like the perfect it's like the perfect exact angle to be like a smug, arrogant prick with his head like held high, like looking down upon you, looking down over his big, big nose upon you. Little boy focused marketing segment. Computer games had followed a different tack. Unlike consoles, basically anyone with a computer could make software that ran on these machines. And so, a much wider variety of content appeared on them, including adventure games. 
Adventure games had begun as text-only programs, where the player would get a description of a room or environment, and then type... And I am interested in the, co the what he's getting at in the video, as much as he's kind of annoying, he's a little boring, whatever, but it's like, eh, this is of interest to me, I, you know. I was just playing Zork last week. ...type a command of what they wanted their character to do. Quickly, graphics were added to these games, until companies like Sierra and LucasArts were turning out what became known as point-and-click adventures, where a character walked across a screen and the user would click on the objects or people they wanted he to interact it. with. In this way, the player could explore a world, solve puzzles, and take part in an unfolding narrative. While these games, like all computer games, were played... Is he going to make the argument that these games are, like, more accessible to women or something? Because... Because I gotta be fucking honest, these games are less accessible to fucking anybody than, like, a normal video game. I, for those of you that are not aware, a lot of the game, not all of them, but a lot of the games that he's showing right now as, like, adventure games of the time, uh, are really weird bullshit nightmare games where you just, like, walk in the wrong part of the screen and, like, a, a fucking avalanche falls on you and you die kind of thing, like, or you... You use an item and then 17 hours later you find out that you needed that item and you need to restart the whole game. You know, stuff like that. So I, these these games are not exactly, like, accessible to people. I, I don't know. Not any more so than a fucking Mortal Kombat or a Doom or something. I, I guess they're, like, less visually, you know, extreme and violent. But, I, I mean, I don't know why that's necessarily a gendered thing either. I mean, Dominantly by boys. The creators often pitched them towards a much wider audience and dreamed of a future where the computer game would stand beside mediums like film and television, enjoyed by people of all genders and age groups. With the dawn of the CD-ROM drive and the massive amounts of data it could store, many times that of the default storage medium of the time, the floppy disk, the imaginations of many game developers... The fucking CD-ROM drive? What do you... We haven't even gotten into Doom yet. Doom was before the CD-ROM. Hold your fucking horses there, Jethro. ...developers turn to so-called interactive movies using live-action actors. As Sierra CEO Ken Williams put it, I always thought the future of storytelling was on the computer. I predicted that computer games would be bigger than films, and I still believe there is a huge potential with storytelling games if done correctly. Watching a story from the inside is more exciting than from the outside. But the true future of gaming would come not from the big name companies dreaming of celebrity castings, but from a ragtag group of men in their 20s operating out of a rundown riverfront house. That feel when you become this guy's bitch. It's a great thing when a photo like this becomes a famous photo because you get like him making this like shiggity dig dog diggity face and then him making his like tarred face. And then I don't know, is this Sandy Peterson? I forget which one this is, but he's... He's making his best, like, look at him and laugh! And, and that's a good, that's also a good pose. This is a great photo to, to, to become a famous photo. This is, a, this is, this is what you want your photo to be. If it becomes famous, like, you want it to be one where you're doing something wacky. Unless you're dead or something, in which case, or like a murderer, in which case, <laughs> you probably don't want to be murderer John Romero, and this, this is what they show on the news. In Shreveport, Louisiana, who came to call themselves id Software. Their first game became a huge hit in the small shareware scene of indie games at the time. A platformer in the Mario Brothers model, unflaggingly wholesome in both name and content, Commander Keen, 1990 to 1991. Shareware was a model in which software was distributed in part or in whole for free, with the user paying for the rest of the program or documentation support, or simply to support the game makers. The tradition lives on in software uh -huh. trial periods, Patreon-funded developers, and so on. For their next game, they aimed for something more ambitious and much more graphically violent. Deciding on a shooter, they chose an homage to one of the original of the breed, Castle Wolfenstein 1981. Instead of the top down. It's really. This video is hammering home how much. So there's a channel I really like. Uh, he, he does game analysis stuff. It's Noah Caldwell Gervais. He'll talk for like nine hours about the entirety of every Fallout game and talk about its. It, he has very interesting and unique perspectives on games and kind of a. Kind of a. Sometimes, sometimes gets a little political, but it's all right. Uh, he's cool. 
And this video is kind of like that if it was a, a much less interesting and a much more annoying and slow paced and less clever and uh, yeah, just not very good. View of the original game or the side view of a worse microphone. It would place you inside the head of the protagonist looking out on a 3D world. And the game would strip out everything but the barest... He even did a video talking about uh, playing through all of the Quake games from a story perspective. And what's notable about that is that the first couple Quake games basically have no fucking story whatsoever. So he mostly had to go meta about it and talk about the actual, you know, creation of Doom and then Quake and yada yada yada. Here are Nazis. Shoot them before they shoot you. And thus was born the genre-defining Wolfenstein 3D, 1992, okay. which took off like a rocket, becoming probably the best-selling shareware game. This is still kind of not all that critical of what he's talking about, though. I mean, like, a little bit. He's pointing out that, like, a, a, I guess a game like this is more of more drawn toward men, or it's marketed toward boys, at least. But it's not really asking why so much. I mean, I, that's the question I want to know. That, that's what I've been dying to know ever since I did that fucking feminist frequency stream. Why is it that, like, yeah, okay, games are marketed to boys and some are marketed more toward boys than others even, like Doom, you know, violent games. Well, okay, but why, though? Why is it that we've decided on violence as the answer and why does that work? Like, it's me during my commercial streams asking, oh, why is this yogurt, like, specifically for, for women and men can't eat this yogurt? And people in chat go, well, because it's marketing and it works. And it's like, okay, but psychologically, I want to know why. Make that video. Fucking hell. To that point, and getting reviews in mainstream publications that other shareware titles had only dreamed about. A boring Two college later, lecture. A long-anticipated A-list game came out with a similar 3D first-person perspective. Ultima Underworld. There's like not even an attempt to make this entertaining. It's it, it it really is like feminist frequency. It's bizarre how dry this is. You can't have any fucking fun with this at all. You're sitting here talking to me about video games and you, you this is the worst video ever. And while the first person play was far more well realized in this game, for example, you could move up and down, which you couldn't in Wolfenstein 3D. As an RPG game, the first-person mode was one of several, and the gameplay was far more cerebral with puzzles, clues... You're gonna say the first person is better in this game than it is in Th Wolfenstein, just because you can, like, look up and down? I mean... Wolfenstein, you don't have this tiny, tiny little window, and you can actually... I've played some of this Ultima Underworld game. It is one of those bizarre 90s DOS games that uses, like, every key on the keyboard, and it's really unintuitive, and you'd think that you could just, like, move normally, but you actually click on this thing to fucking move. I don't know if this is better than fucking Wolfenstein. You can still play Wolfenstein 3D. It still plays like a normal fucking video game, you Maps know? Maps and skill leveling. There was a plot. Ultima Underworld was a successful game, but Wolfenstein, a game which had taken far less time and effort to make ran absolute rings around it and became the game of 1992. Yeah, where's the where's the skits and the evil literate machine forcing him to play Super Noah Super Noah's Ark 3D? Two. Come on. For their follow-up, it improved the 3D engine to match Ultima Underworld, allowing true three-dimensional views and movement and multi-level environments. I'm they glad to confirm, by the way, there's a sub chat member who says, as a woman, I just play Skyrim and Pokemon. Thank you. I mean, we all knew that, but it's good to have that. It's good to have that uh, confirmed, thank you. Created a much wider variety of weapons, and instead of Nazis, the player would face all manner of creatively imagined demons and monsters. Women don't there like even these be things. a handful of minor puzzles, places Women where you don't like puzzles. To, for example, push a button to open a door in another location. Are we going to get into why this is more men once and for all toxic and men shareware men like and into the stratosphere of the top mainstream game companies, creating a franchise that would last for decades? Doom. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back in nineteen. Okay, but like the other, the other ang half of this coin is 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 missed, which also spawned a franchise that had like three or four games in it, not as popular or long lasting as Doom. But I mean, really, uh, I, I, you're not gonna act like Mist has not been fucking, you know, revolutionary and uh, in in you know inspired a lot of other game developers and stuff or something 88 
Two brothers operating out of their parents' basement in Spokane, Washington, were inspired by the new graphical development tool HyperCard 1987 for the Macintosh. I actually don't know it, much they about Myst. three children's games, focused less on achievable goals and more on simply exploring worlds, and founded the company Scion Inc. to sell them. By 1990, they decided to make a game for adults using the same system, called Myst. Much as id had stripped the action game down to its barest essentials, Scion stripped down the point-and-click adventure game. Instead of a player character walking around the screen, their game placed you inside the head of the protagonist looking out on the I mean, I, I'm getting the horrible feeling as we're approaching halfway here that this video is not even going to actually be about, like, feminist... Or, it's not even going to be about gender and gaming at all. Like, it kind of starts out that way for some reason. Uh, but then it doesn't seem like it's really following that thread at all. I wanted this video to follow that thread and, and, and be the fucking feminist frequency video that she never made that I kept asking her to make in that whole stream and it never existed. Uh, I thought that that might have been this, but apparently it still isn't this. It seems like we're not coming. I mean, we might come back to that. But I guess we're just getting more into specifically these two games and the Soul War? Okay. World. While this game would have bits of live action... Thing is, with a video like this, you're supposed to have an idea of where it's going at this point. Like, you're supposed to... It's supposed to have given you, by this point in a video like this, it's supposed to have given you all of the pieces that you need to understand what's happening, where it's going to lead, you know... And 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 in, and in this case, I'm just I'm still I'm like almost halfway. What the fuck are you getting at? I what are you just you're just talking about old video games. I, great, yeah, Doom's cool, Mist is cool. Play them, play them both. Awesome. Fucking get to the point. I don't need to know the whole story, the whole fucking history of Mist. What's the point? You know, the bulk of time would be spent. This is really pissing me off. Puzzles, solving them, and unraveling the mysteries of the backstory and characters. As first-person 3D games, Myst and Doom are actually quite similar. The primary difference between the two is philosophical. In Myst, your character fell through a book into a world of fantasy. In Doom, your character was sent to a space station to put down monsters. Gameplay in Myst involved exploration, unraveling a mystery. Cool, like, ad-libbing microphone fills there, I guess. solving puzzles. Gameplay in Doom involves shooting demons. Mist required a CD drive. Why can't we talk to the demons? Drive in the latest in SVGA graphics. Doom fit on a few floppies and ran on common VGA graphics. Mist. What does any of this have to do with communism, comrade? Had been released first on the rarefied Macintosh. Doom had been released first on ubiquitous. MMA. I am going to make you give me back all of your gray clothing and drab materials, sir. You are no longer allowed to come to the Karl Marx Freakdown next mo next week. Fuck off. DOS machine. This is such this is such lame communist critique. Mist was the game you bought to show off your new machine. Doom was the game you played on whatever you had. Mist appealed to a broad demographic and actually finally had more female players than male. Doom was marketed to the same core demo. Somebody's, somebody's starting a timer for how long I can watch this guy before they leave. Okay. Well, the video's got more... Uh, well, technically, the video has less than 10 minutes in it, so maybe if we're real fast about it, I... Oh, please, God, don't go! Uh, was Jesus Christ! ...graphic of pubescent boys who'd eaten up Mortal Kombat. Mist was beautiful. Doom was cool. Mm -hmm. To be clear... It's not that girls and women can't enjoy shooting games. It's that they're not who these games were marketed to, targeted at, or who parents would think to give them to in our gender normative culture. But why, though? Stripped down shooters like... I mean, I hate to be like a seven-year-old, but... But why, though? Wolfenstein 3D and Doom left in only mindless violence, which our culture... Like, you, don't need to, uh, you don't need to tell me that girls are not who Doom was marketed toward. I know that. Why, though? Why, why, why weren't they? Make that video. This is just it's fucking telling me obvious things. Associates primarily with... Or shit that's not even re relevant. Like Wolfenstein, Mist ascended from its humble origins to outsell the biggest, most expensive games on the market. It would have been the game of 1993, except, of course, that year also saw the release of Doom. The sales numbers for these two games exponentially dwarfed most of their competitors. 
In a world where selling a few hundred thousand copies was considered a major hit, Do moved over three million. Really needed to like fill in like a, a fu he needed to record separately himself saying the word copies and drop it in there. What did he say instead of copies? Did he fuck up the word copies? Maybe it sounded too much like he was talking about cops and he had to re-record it to sound a little different so that it was a little more distinct. ...million units and missed more than six million. And in doing so, these games ushered in the era of the PC game Blockbuster. And while it is true that Miss sold nearly twice as many copies as Doom, that statistic doesn't tell the whole story. Doom was id's last game distributed as shareware, which meant that the first few levels of the game could be freely copied and passed around. And those free levels traveled far and wide, making it into store shelves and shareware. Maybe that's why it was more popular than Myst. Maybe that was why. Compilations as free giveaways with magazines, copied from person to person on floppies and CDs. It's also like, we're talking about like, oh, Doom is more for boys. It's marketed to boys. It's got shooting, so boys. I don't know, man. Mist puzzle like adventure games have like puzzles in them. You got to use your brain, and especially already at that point, people are probably like, "Man, I don't want to do another weirdo fucking puzzle where I got to skin a cat to turn into like a fake mustache to pretend to be a guy who didn't even have a mustache." I, like I don't, I don't, I don't want to play game. I just want to play a game where I kill monsters. You know, like Doom is a much more simple game that's a little more easy for people to fucking understand and pick up and play than Myst. And Myst isn't even as bad as that whole fucking genre gets. Myst is fine. Myst is... I've played a bit of Myst. It's not like a one... It's not one of those adventure games, but I wouldn't blame somebody at that point in time in 1993 having been burnt by a King's Quest game and being like, No, you know, I'm, a, I'm good. I'm just gonna play the game where I shoot monsters in the face. I don't need another fucking game that, like, kills me by, because I ate the wrong slice of pie or something. Like, no thank you. I, I'm, I'm good. He's showing up on the dial-up bulletin boards, gopher sites, news groups, and the primitive websites of the period. And so while fewer people paid for Doom, and to be clear, many, many people still paid for Doom, an order of magnitude more people played Doom. The end result of all this would take years to become clear. Companies fell over themselves to duplicate these games in hope of duplicating their sales. Doom-style games like Doom 2, 1994, the aggressively sexist Duke Nukem 3D... The aggressively sex... Oh, man, did someone not get the joke? I mean, he's right. I, uh, technically, he's not wrong by saying it's aggressively sexist. That's not wrong. <laughs> Does he know that that's the point, though? <laughs> like, oh, dear. 1996 and Unreal 1998 continued to sell like gangbusters. Meanwhile, Mist-style games like Zork Nemesis 1996, Zork Nemesis, Lighthouse the Dark Being 1996 and Obsidian 1997. Okay, wow, well, yeah, no, I've literally I've literally never heard of any of these actually to be fair. I didn't know there was a Zork Nemesis. Was that still text-based by 96? Probably not. Uh no, I mean, yeah, I, there's a lot of adventure games out there. Um, you know, sure, it would be cool. This is being weirdly un... It's not talking about the fucking history that adventure games had. Yeah, there's probably a lot of people who didn't want to fucking play them because they were a, lo a lot of them were a bunch of fucking bullshit. Because every game Sierra ever made was just a bunch of shit. It was just a bunch of stupid, wacky shit. You needed, like, a guide to fucking play it, or just, like, trial and error your way through just nonsense that made no fucking sense. No wonder people didn't want to buy adventure games at this point in time. Because it's the exception to the rule to find one that's not moon logic silliness. Though Riven, the sequel to Mist, 1997, was successful selling 4.5 million units. And with them, the point-and-click adventure fell out of fashion, along with the dream of the interactive movie for the whole family. More and more games began to look like Doom. Other types of gameplay and game player were pushed to the cultural periphery. The war had ended and Mist lay in a pool of blood and nostalgia. So what happened? Why did the children of one blockbuster succeed while those of the other failed? People bought Mist for its okay, beautiful graphics and intriguing story, and learning to play was as easy as clicking on things. 
However, the difficulty curve on the puzzles was sharp. The creators of Myst would later remark that most people probably didn't make it off the first island slash time period of the game out of seven. I should mention here seven. I remember uh, playing Myst, and I got as far as. So there's the first island area, and then you go. I think the next area in Mist is this like tree village place where you're like walking through like like bridges or uh, 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 connecting trees, big trees. And then the next area I remember I was like underground and I was going on some kind of weird fucking like mine cart through this horrible maze. And then I think I was having some kind of technical issue mixed with uh, hating how much the maze sucked and then I just stopped playing it. Um, so yeah, no, it's possible that the people might have just, people might have reached like a weird maze in, hell, even Doom has levels that are like, where the fuck do I go? Good God. I have all the keys. Where's the door? Fucking hell. Oh, it was through a secret wall. Fuck off. Yes, 1993, another puzzle based point and click adventure game that sold well in part by showing off the potential of people's computer systems released in the shadow of Myst and benefiting from its favorable early reception. But the failings of Myst as a game, even if it turned people off similar games, does not alone explain how the once booming adventure genre fell into decline and why companies like Sierra and LucasArts largely stopped producing them, especially since Myst's own sequel was a success. People sometimes blame moon logic for the fall of adventure games, ah, the tendency ah, in them ah. to have puzzles that were ill thought out or illogical. But LucasArts games were known for being largely absent of such issues, and their games got rave reviews, so that explanation alone doesn't cut it. As we So the ones that didn't have those were popular, and the one... I mean, I guess I get what he's saying. It's possible for games to have succeeded in that space, you know, but... Maybe that's because they were all the LucasArts ones and people knew that they could trust Monkey Island or whatever to not have that kind of shit in, in the game. I still don't know if I can trust that fucking... I, I, there's, there's, there's games in that era that I'm like, uh, I could play this, this seems cool, but like, I know Monkey Island doesn't have this, but is Day of the Tentacle gonna have this, you know? I still have like fucking shell shock about those kinds of games, because I remember watching Retsu Prey play through fucking King's Quest and how fucking insane the whole King's Quest series is with its fucking puzzles and shit. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, I guess he addresses it, but he kind of hand waves it away. I think it's a much bigger deal than he's getting at. Those fucking games are insane. We saw earlier, after the rise of Nintendo, video game marketing focused almost exclusively on boys, gradually turning more stereotypical and toxic. The 90s were a decade that saw massive growth in PC. What about it was toxic? PC home ownership. From 20% I of... Know, the I, this, this is the type of person who just hears these buzzwords. It's like, what's toxic about it? What the fuck is toxic about, like, Duke Nukem? What, what that it's a joke that you don't like? What's, to what's, what's toxic? Why are they toxic? Households at the beginning of the decade, 50% by its end. Further... As home consoles and PC ownership rose, arcades, once the primary way kids played video games, declined. And so as the boys who had been marketed to in the 80s and early 90s grew up into teenagers, they became the dominant block of what came to be known as gamers. And game companies, Gamer. under the capitalist impulse towards massive growth, didn't want to chase moderate success. They wanted the blockbusters that they now knew were possible. It wasn't so much that the adventure game is the end result of this video that capitalism is a bitch. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. If your video is literally why doesn't the nice game that I like get made anymore? Oh, it didn't get enough money. Oh, capitalism. That's the video, isn't it? Is that what is that what we're getting at? Is that really all this is? Ultimately, this whole fucking 20 minute video gets to didn't sell much in it. Ah, didn't sell enough in it. Nah, I'm not making more. Didn't sell enough. Nope. It's good, good video. Cool video. Game audience. Cool left. fucking video. Game makers left. This that. motherfucker told me how many discs Doom came came on, and ultimately the video is gonna just be about like, nah, I didn't sell enough. And yet. 
But the similarities between Doom and Myst show is that there's nothing about the first-person 3D game that inherently means the primary activity must be violent. That's a choice. And it's a choice that game makers keep making even when ostensibly trying to make their games more narratively rich, thoughtful, and meaningful. Games like Half-Life 1998 would successfully mix the first-person shooter with elements of adventure games, developing stories and characters and puzzles to be solved, demonstrating that there was still an audience for this type of thing. And future games would follow suit, absorbing, I mean, for example, the... Di he's talking about 1999, that, like, he's talking about Half-Life. I, I, what about, like, System Shock? What about Thief? What about Deus Ex? You've moved on now to, like, Mass Effect? If you're gonna tell me all about the... Now, because you're talking about gay... Uh, I, guess, I, guess, I guess what I get what he's getting at, but it's, like, violent cells. Why do you think... It's the same reason why movies are mostly action movies. Like, most popular movies are action-adventure fighty punch superhero movies or explosion fucking whatever indiana jones star wars shit like that blockbuster shit you don't get like the french connection in the, bl the bl blowing out fucking box offices and getting like happy meal toys y y you know that just doesn't happen dialogue tree method Pe people like action characters. and yet because the core mechanic hasn't changed there are a huge number of people who will never discover the nuances of Bioshock 2007 or Mass Effect 2007 at all because they have no, at all. no interest in a game where you have to shoot people over and over to make the story go. Of course, adventure games never, sounds like a fucking skill issue. never completely died, and the rise of the internet, smartphones, and tablets have proved a fertile ground for new indies and revivals of classics. And there's even a much-touted VR adaptation of Myst on the horizon. But these are all in the... This is such a... And I feel like there are videos that I've seen that basically get at what he's trying to get at, I think. Which is... It's like a fundamental question of why is it that violence and action are the things that we have... This is like... It's a, it's a criticism that I have a lot of the time when I see like some fucking... It's like the Game Awards or something. And it's like some new game gets announced and it's just another new game where you shoot people or stab people. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I always think of Katamari. Give me a new game that makes me think of Katamari where I'm not, like, killing and fighting people and where something interesting is happening. Uh, and it's like, you know, like a, an untitled goose game or something. Something that's like a unique thing that you're doing that isn't just exploding and shooting people and stabbing them. And I like a lot of games. I've been playing Yakuza lately. I like a game where you punch people and hit them and whack them with things, you know? But, but man, it's hard to get excited when it's just another one that's like that. So I guess I get what he's fucking getting at with like, yeah, why aren't there more games like Myst? But that doesn't make the video not frustrating and boring and annoying. And boy, I, this guy's just a weirdo. Let's defund the Paw Patrol, everybody, because they're making the games... They're making them the games capitalist. Fringes of what has become gaming culture, or like casual games, think Candy Crush 2012 or Angry Birds 2014, an ignored or ridiculed thing that is not part of that culture at all. Today, excluding sports games, almost any list of the most popular games is dominated almost exclusively by action games in the Doom mold. Almost exclusively by action games in... Okay, hang on. Let me let me get the full quote here. Today, excluding sports games, mm -hmm. almost any list of the most popular games is dominated almost exclusively by action games in the... Okay, in this very list that you're showing me, you're talking about in the Doom mold. There's not one game here that's in the Doom mold. I mean, what, like, unless you're casting a really broad fucking net, you're showing me Kingdom Hearts, Mario Odyssey, Mortal Kombat 11, sure, that one's pretty violent, I guess. I mean, these are all action games, I, I guess. Zelda has a lot of puzzles in it, so's Mario. Uh, but, but none of them are even, none of these, like... You're showing me this. None of these are even first-person shooters. You can't just show me, like, most popular games of whatever, and it, it could at least be, like, a thing that you're showing that represents the argument you're making. 
And instead, you, you're literally... Yeah, you know, usually it's just games like Doom, and every game, excluding the sports game, is, like, Mario and Zelda and Kingdom Hearts. You know, famous Doom clones. Doom mold. The Doom this mold. This been the last time, maybe the only time, a top-selling game of this class... There is a Mar. There's a few Mario Doom mods. Uh, what was it? It's like uh, Legend of the Cel Seven Coins or something. There's, there's like a whole series of ones that are like a Doom Mario conversion things. They're, they're pretty good. And then there's other ones that are, you know, other styles of that too. No, there's definitely Doom Mario out there. Or females. The, the, that's the great thing about Doom is that probably all of those games could be made in the Doom mold if they really wanted to. Players than male ones. Game companies essentially stop trying to market to them at all. Again, it's not that girls can't enjoy such games. It's that they're not the target audience this of the game. This is such a fucking bad video. It's like all over the place. Why did he tell me how many discs Doom came on? This video is 20 minutes long. I know how many floppy discs Doom came on. And, 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 and we're finally getting back to like fucking marketing games toward women or whatever good good job buddy you're finally back here Makers. we've been waiting it's not for that you games like doom are bad per se the problem is with the methodology of slicing off a demographic targeting to it relentlessly encouraging people to associate brands with their self-identity making what they sell not just a product but a lifestyle it's with aggressively crafting and what the fuck? How did we get to how did we get to fucking loving Star Wars now? Or bad what? Class had more female players than male ones. Game companies essentially stop trying to market to them at all. Uh -huh. Again, it's not that girls can't enjoy such games. It's that they're not the target audience of the game makers. And it's not that <coughs> games like Doom are bad per se. The problem is with the methodology of slicing off a demographic, targeting to it relentlessly, encouraging people to associate brands with their self-identity, <coughs> making what they sell not just a product. No, I heard everything that he said. I mean, I went back like for extra context, like I coughed and missed something. No, it's pretty much all there. He suddenly pivoted this into <coughs> a, a thing about how making a brand your whole life is a problem. Wow, I mean... That's not related really to the anything else in this video, but I guess I agree, you know. A lifestyle. Sure. And aggressively crafting and marketing that brand through toxic masculinity because it sells without any regard for the repercussions. And the result is what's become gamer culture. And when people have tried to point out that maybe some of this stuff is sexist, retrograde, Here or tasteless, we go, everybody. they've been shouted down, demonized, and literally terrorized. Uh... <laughs> How could this happen to me? <sighs> no, I watched the Anita Sarkeesian videos on stream recently. That's why I've been referencing them th frequently throughout this um, um, awful videos, this awful channel that we've been watching tonight. Uh, I, I, I watched her videos on stream recently, and they were notably uh, real bad. They were very vapid and shallow and did not get to the core of any issues, much like how yours isn't really. It's funny that I guess she was she was a, a, an inspiration toward you. Similarly, you also have nothing to say. Uh, um, and your videos are just about as boring, really. Actually, yeah, they're really on par. You guys, hope maybe she can maybe maybe she can get you a job. And from this toxified loam rose Gamergate. Game Gamergate! Oh my God! Hey! Gamer Gate! Hey! Gamer Gate has been written about elsewhere at length better than I can. Endless Gamer Gate! a jilted ex trying to slut shame an indie game maker by pointing out that she'd slept with a gaming journalist, ballooned into a Well, it was several gaming journalists who were all giving her game specifically good good press. But all right, sure. Campaign of harassment and persecution against women in gaming in general, and women who. Uh, the video has just gotten ten minutes longer, guys. <laughs> the inevitable GamerGate video just got ten minutes longer. Point Ooh! Of and lack of diversity. Ooh! In particular, 
and this provided a template for harassment campaigns against supposed true gamergate never dies it is only reborn social justice warriors a festering cesspool of white male grievance from which yeah that's me shooting red what the fuck dude <laughs> he's turning into shooting rampages now wow this video is you know joking about red letter media this is it reminds me of when rich evans described the movie ryan's babe and he was like this is like uh, uh when when astronauts take food up to up to space you you put a little water into this video and it'll let out into like five or six different video essays yeah yeah this is gonna be enough content for the whole return trip it's crazy as Slade has pointed out, the actual connection between real shootings and video games is not violent games causing violent behavior directly, as hand-wringing moralists and bad faith gun activists have claimed, but rather the culture that has risen up around them. So, um, the real connection between mass shoot- wow, wow, I just noticed that this article too. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Who made this great article? Oh man, well it says right there. This what site is that? It says users up here by the way, under where it says video games in the title, the the article says users. The real connection between video games and mass shootings. Guys, it's Gamergate. I uh, can't I can't believe it. Here I thought it was you know mental illness and gun problems and you know probably like 9 or 7 or 8 or 10 other things. Before, um, before it would be Gamergate, but, you know, smug little Avatar Man here has informed us otherwise, so I, I guess we have to listen to him. I have no choice but to listen. I'm so glad I didn't click off the video in boredom, because it really, it really, it really, it really gets good toward the end here. There was a moment in the 90s where this seemed like it wasn't going to come to pass. Where the popularity of Mist and the drive towards narrative. oh that article came out one day after the the shooting that that um that article came out one day after a shooting uh, that's great that's cool so people see a mass shooting and they think oh I can make this about Gamergate awesome and send article oh that's gonna make me at least twenty dollars hell yeah I stand with the victims hashtag never again of games aimed at a wide audience might have created a gaming culture more like yeah so um um i mean people were kind of fucking they were they were right on the money people in chat i mean it's been said before that like jack thompson and anita sarkeesian are really similar you know like it's i mean fuck we may we realize that anita and prager you have almost the exact same video format like the down to the down to the color of backdrop used in some of the videos being a few shades of difference, like the same kind of dark teal color. Uh, uh, her her videos are very very similar to PragerU videos, um, and and yeah, and drive I mean towards narrative games aimed at a wide audience might have. Yeah, I mean this guy, th this guy has uh managed to managed to really do this wow uh he's 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 really managed to do this people have pointed out before that like jack thompson and anita are pretty pretty similar uh and people in chat this whole time were just like um yeah this is going to turn into a whole thing about how violent video games make you a shooter uh and i'm like well that's a stretch that seems like a stretch no, it really did. It somehow came around to that. I was I was not thinking big picture on that one. It did. It came back to that. Uh, it came around to uh, violent video games are bad because of my political reason that's more valid than yours. Inherently. Uh, which is, that's super great. I'm so, it's, I, this, this video is so, so much dumber than I thought it would be. Created a even. gaming culture more like the general culture. An audience as wide and vast as that of other mass media. But a capitalist would argue that this result was simply the law of the marketplace. First person shooter games sold better, and so their rise was inevitable. But choices had been made all along, beginning with the marketing of computers primarily to boys at the dawn of PCs, 
which meant that even when Mist was popular with women... Yes, yes, new people that just joined. This is the same guy who had George Floyd in the Paw Patrol video. That's correct. This is a really cool channel. Now, it's occurring to me that this channel might be a fucking joke, but I really highly doubt it. And the reason it occurs... Because it, it just reminds me of... Um, there's another thing we saw recently that reminded me of that. Uh, this, too. The channel Remarkable Republican which is a guy who made several video essays uh, decrying the Yakuza series for being, uh, like, gay propaganda or something. Um, and it turned out later that he t he was actually, like, a, a lefty Young Turks fan. He was just doing that as, like, a, a parody account kind of thing. And it was a pretty good parody, because uh, it took a lot of people... A, a lot of us were like, eh, this is probably a joke, but man, who who's to say, really... You know, we weren't fully convinced. This could be a, a remarkable Republican type situation, but I doubt it because it's just such a fucking dry, boring video. It, do it doesn't have a, a funny concept like, you know, Kazuma Kiryu is making the frogs gay or whatever the fuck. It's, it's just this really lame, boring video that I think, no, it's... Definitely giving it too much credit to assume that it's not just some guy's bad opinions. Uh, man, man, imagine the smell of the farts inside this, 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 this space bubble. And wider audiences in general, the culture didn't exist for them to become a part of. Oh, Yakuza's is very gay, but... Primed and waiting. The war had never been a fair fight. The entire playing field... Let me tell you, the ending of Yakuza 8, the ending of Infinite Wealth is... Maybe some of the most gay that it's ever been. There's a, pa a part at the end where it gets real steamy. Uh, and then it gets real dramatic after, but it gets real steamy for a moment. Tilted in favor of Doom and its successors. Of course, video games are now more popular among ever wider audiences, and adventure games are having a bit of a revival. Maybe, while everyone's distracted by esports and streaming celebrities, a new kind of gaming culture is just beginning to emerge. Hi everyone. So yeah, that's true. The villain of Yakuza 3's whole motivation is that he loves another man. That's 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 that's, that's accurate. Yeah, that is that, <laughs> that is accurate. Uh well, all right, that's the end of the video, basically. But uh, we got two bucks from Alan Sampson asking me to to read the article he mentioned. I wonder if he links it here. Oh, I think it is. I think this is it. It's on Slate. Oh, my God. Oh, they changed the name of it, didn't they? No, they didn't. There's just multiple. Oh, there's two. Guys, there's two articles. Oh. So one of them came out August 4th, and that was short, like, just after the mass shooting, uh, 2019. The, the next one came out August 23rd, 2019. And that would be, what, five years after Gamergate, basically? Like, late August, too. So just about five years after Gamergate. Uh, and they're still talking about it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, wow. Well, uh, we, um, yeah, no, I gotta read this now. Uh, hang on, let me get some good, let me get some good music going here. Um, let's see here. Yeah. And, uh. Okay. A little bit of, uh, Sims 1 music here. And, um, this is very exciting. I'm very excited to bring this one to you. Um, the real connection between video games and mass shootings it's Gamergate by Evan Urquhart, uh, August 4th, 2019. Um, <clears throat> a makeshift memorial outside the Cielo Vista Mall Walmart in El Paso, Texas on Sunday. Republicans have found a culprit to blame for this weekend's dual mass shootings, and it's not guns or white nationalism. It's video games. This trend started with Fox News host John Scott, who speculated on Saturday that the shooter might be a young man who grew up playing video games. This thinking has been... Wow, what a what an amazing fucking opinion. What an amazing guess. This, um, this, this thinking has been picked up by others, including House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who suggested video games dehumanize individuals, and Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who speculated that 
uh, for the shooter, the hu the murders were a video game to him. He has no sense of humanity, no sense of life. He wanted to be a super soldier for his Call of Duty game. I always like when people refer to a, vi a video game in that form of like, for his Mario game. You know, like that, that sort of thing. Um, Update, update August 5th, uh, 2019, in his statement on Monday morning, President Donald Trump also blamed the shooting on, in part, the glorification of violence in our society, including the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. So is this article going to be, no, your scapegoat is wrong, my scapegoat is right? It's not because video games, it's because Gamergate. Get it, get it right here, people. Let's, let's. I mean, that's literally what it says. So I guess so. The calls from Republicans for parents to stop letting their kids play games, Patrick, or to use gaming behavior to uh, identify ident potential shooters ahead of time, McCarthy, seems desperate in their attempt to make the conversation about anything other than the availability of guns or the rise of violent white supremacy. But although these uh, Republicans probably don't know it, there is a clear and obvious connection between video games, white nationalist terrorism, and the image board where the El Paso shooter posted his manifesto. Uh-oh, not the image board. Nothing good ever happens on an image board. Um, <clears throat> um, um, that connection is Gamergate, the, uh, the campaign of misogynistic harassment by aggrieved gamers that began in 2014 and which moved to 8chan from 4chan when the latter refused to allow Gamergaters to use that board for coordinated harassment campaigns and doxing. Well, they wouldn't even let people discuss it. I mean, no website would allow people to... The, the whole web... The whole internet basically issued a fucking blanket ban on discussing Gamergate, including 4chan at a certain point, which was really disappointing. They're not even discussing it. You know, yeah, delete the posts of the people that are doing doxing stuff, but you couldn't even just have a conversation thread about it. You would get banned. So, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know about that, but 8chan existed briefly before Gamergate, but its popularity as a place where- Guys, we're getting the full lore here. I'm so glad that somebody's finally giving us the unbiased and true and honest take on what happened in Gamergate. Um... <clears throat> 8chan existed briefly before Gamergate, but its popularity as a place where manifestos are shared and racist violence is openly advocated can be traced back to the migration of Gamergaters. Uh, Gamergaters. Yeah, the, the, my, the, the herd of Gamergaters walking over the fucking Antarctic tundra, you know, on their, on their, 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 their seasonal migration, right. Um, the herd of Gamergators and the specific need on the part of Gamergators for a forum so absolute in its dedication to free speech that it would allow even harassment campaigns and doxing against individuals, specifically individual women in gaming, like Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian, the real victims. Even to this day, there's th don't forget that they're the victims in all of this. Don't forget that, you know, the mass shooting that happened... I think you need to consider what Zoe Quinn has gone through, okay? All right, I know I know that a lot of people are feeling bad right now for a lot of reasons. Some people died, but Zoe Quinn got called a whore after she fucked people for good press for her terrible video game. So, you know, is there no justice? In I don't think there's justice in the world. I think that we live in a bleak society, just a bleak, just a bleak society. Um, it was no longer enough to say terrible things on 4chan. 8chan's Gamergators needed to be able to plan and carry out terrible actions. Their flight created a core com Well, see, but this is the problem when you ban the discussion of it on 4chan. You, you, you force people to fucking go to other websites that are weird and more extreme. Like, you could have just let people fucking talk about it on Reddit or, like, NeoGAF or wherever, but no, they shut down all conversation of it everywhere uh, in a weirdly coordinated way that was like, oh, wow, this website also won't let you discuss it. That's so strange. That's so strange. Uh, you know, you could have just allowed people to talk about it normally, but then you didn't, and then they decided to fucking get weird about it, so... You know, maybe if you didn't, you know, do that, then you, you might have had some more success. 
Um, although some researchers have claimed to find a link between video games and aggression, meta-analyses suggest that this connection is weak or non-existent. That makes sense because the community of people who play video games is both, both vast and diverse, while the people who commit mass shootings are both few in number and overwhelmingly male. Nearly as many women report that they... Well, uh, hang on, aren't a lot of the mass shooters now trans? There's been like, haven't there been like five trans mass shooters in the last like fucking six months or something? I, I don't know. I don't think it's been that many, but there's, there's been a few. There's been a few, so I don't know. That's probably also, that's an interesting statistic. This was five years ago, so I mean, you know, we can't hold them to that. Uh, we can't hold them to that standard. Uh... I wonder if I wonder if people like this are willing to misgender a shooter if it'll make them if it'll make the statistics seem more male. I wonder if that. Hmm. I don't know. But uh, anyways, um, uh, nearly as many women report that they play video games as men, and there are no significant racial differences in who plays and who doesn't. Well, yeah, more women play games uh, almost as much as men, but, but I mean, like, I mean, like, are we all just gonna pretend that a lot of that isn't like fucking Candy Crush and stuff? I, I know, I know, a lot of it's not for everyone for sure, but I don't know, man. Uh, a lot of it is, you, you know, uh, a lot, a lot of it is. Uh, um. You know, not for everybody, for sure. Uh, it was no longer enough. Um, yeah, uh, let me see here. Uh, the picture does change somewhat when you ask someone uh, when you ask whether someone identifies as a gamer. Self-identified gamers are predominantly male, but even then, non-white people identify as gamers more often than whites do. This always gets into this weird racism area. That's just like I mean, I know they wouldn't call they'd never call it racism. But it's like this, like, this very specific, and you're white, and he's white, and what are you? You look white. Are you probably white, right? Oh, you're like Native American? Whatever! You, maybe your parent, one of, one of your parents might have been lying to you. You look white! Like, fuck, dude, I don't know, is this, pro is this progress? This feels, this feels weird. This just feels weird. Anytime you read one of these articles that's like, mm, overwhelmingly white, mm, uh, I don't know, man. Are you going to start talking to me about 13% here? Come on, settle down. Settle down with your weird, your weirdness here. I don't know. Uh, uh, Self-identified game. Well, who still call it? So here's the thing, right? Nobody's going to really call themselves a fucking gamer in 2024. I think possibly a part of why. I mean, that's just kind of cringe for various reasons, but there was a, 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 alongside Gamergate was the concerted effort to stop using the word gamer. Uh, all these fucking websites, the same websites that were all in on every other article that came out, all, all, you know, coordinated all at once. Uh, the Game Journal pros. Uh, all these fucking websites, they were also like... They, they were also, like, trying to be like, No, ga gamers are dead. We don't need to use the term gamers anymore. Gamers are bad. We don't- ga Gamers has a bad identity. We need to reclaim it and call it players. We're now players, people. Which I think has a worse term. I think players is, is worse. I think player is associated with someone who, like, fucks around with several women at once. Like, that would be a player. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if gamers is worse than players necessarily, but that was one of the ones they wanted to go with. So maybe that's why we don't say gamer as much anymore. But, uh, yeah, I don't know who's still really calling themselves a self- who's self-identifying as a gamer. Probably people that watch Ninja. Um, because gaming is so vast, it's clear that the specific grievances of Gamergate that women sh- shouldn't okay what are the specific grievances of gamergate let's learn people that women should not be allowed to criticize games from a feminist perspective that wasn't one of no, that wasn't okay you lose and that the and that industry attempts to increase diversity are ruining 
Okay, this, so this is what the, um, yeah, this is what, I guess, yeah, uh, sure, all right. I guess this is what happened then. It's, it's, it's amazing to me sometimes just to look at something like this where I'm like, yeah, I guess this is the historical, this is what the Wikipedia article would say, I guess, sure, uh, all right, that's definitely very much not true, but, all right. Um, had to do with the entitlement of an angry subculture of men within gaming, not the content of the games themselves. This subculture of gamer gators who eru by the way, this article was written five years after Gamergate. Um, um, shortly after a mass shooting, um, capitalizing on a bunch of dead people and um, using Gamergate to do it. And um, it's now been five years. And, um, uh, it's, uh, we are now 10, we are now almost 10 years on from Gamergate, people. I just wanted to give you a little time, a little heads up there on, on the, the time frame of all of this. Um, the subculture of Gamergators who erroneously believe themselves to be the only true gamers in a world of phonies is what made the culture of 8chan what it is. I mean, it's very selective, too. It's funny because the entire Gamergate thing had a side campaign that was... Not your shield. It was so funny. It was so funny how Gamergate got really like diverse too. I remember Jim and and um, Jim had this picture up during one of the like Sargon, like clowning on Sargon wanted to get Donald Trump to tweet about Gamergate or whatever. Gamergate 2, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna get the band back together. Sargon and Ralph and Jim. It's gonna be great. I bet Jim doesn't even own a suit. Um, you know, uh, uh, that was all happening. And, uh, you know, I remember that he, there was a, a picture that he made that it was, it was the Vivian James, the Gamergate mascot. And she was like, we're so tolerant. And it had like a fucking butt plug tail and like it was a bunch of rainbow flags and armpit hair that was dyed purple and it was um yeah cuz cuz gamergate tried to really get like no guys we aren't a hate campaign really we aren't and 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 it was all not your shield this and i am a minority and i support gamergate that and at the end of the day it goes to show why even fucking bother with any of that fucking nonsense cuz look at what happened uh, anybody who actually was like, no, guys, we actually care about ethics. It's like, well, at the end of the day, you know, you're a spit. You, you, you just. You, it turns out you guys just think that gamers, the women, shouldn't be in gaming. Sorry, that's just the. I don't make. I don't make the history books. I don't write history. That uh, the slate, slate, the slate article writes history. Um, but right. Um, uh, you know, the many, many people that, the majority of Gamergate that was actually a bunch of non-white, non-men, uh, sure, um, uh, they, they, they all were misogynist and racist then, and all the more so, uh, Gamergators wanted a safe space from which to attack the women they thought were ruining video games, and by that metric, their creation has succeeded beyond their wildest imaginings. This music's really given this, this article a kick, too. It's not a, difficult to imagine that it could have been a different, a different, uh, it's not difficult to imagine that it could have been a different cultural movement that made 8chan what it is today. That the aggrieved faction could have formed in another subculture of fantasy nerds, say, or sports fans. The result could have been much the same, down to the obsession with high scores that links the El Paso shooter with the Christchurch shooter, who posted it. So, um... Yeah, no, this is explicitly, like, a day or something after a mass shooting bringing up Gamergate to, uh, to, like, uh, a scapegoat, um, I don't know, I mean, it's not even a scapegoat as such, I mean, like, the whole thing is Republicans apparently still using ga games are violent so they cause mass shootings. Well, guess what? This guy who read your article and agreed with it still also thinks that games are violent and lead to mass shootings. So, kinda interesting article here oh you know i get it's not saying that the art this article is not directly saying this this article is is instead saying that this fucking hashtag campaign from like five years before this is responsible for a mass shooting that just happened um 
uh, that's what this article is saying. Um, capitalizing on a bunch of deaths and stuff. That's that's what this this cool article is doing. But the person who read this article, Joe Joe Schlunk, the lefty, who read this article and uh, took it to heart and really liked this article and used it in his video here and 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 sourced it here. This person has more or less also come to the conclusion, much like these, you know, evil Republicans who blame mass shootings on video games. This kind of this person has also apparently come to the conclusion that gaming leads to, you know, uh, an uptick in aggression and murders and stuff. So it's funny, you know. It's just funny. Uh, it's just funny how that how that how that winds up happening. Well. Um, that's, uh, that's some Mexican music. They're not, those people aren't allowed to play video games, so it's nice that we have some of their music in The Sims, at least. Um, you know, that was also a lady singing. They're also not allowed to play video games, so it's, it's cool that she was allowed to be in the song. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah, here's a guy who's uh, that was tw that article was 2020, so that was six years after GamerGate, or that video rather was 2020, so six years after GamerGate, still bringing up GamerGate and Anita Sarkeesian, uh, and now we are you know four years on from that, and uh, I mean the guy still makes videos. He, he uh, how will capitalism end? The Orville Edward Bernstein, and what is to be done? Yeah, this is the Literate Machine channel. Uh, if you want some really great... I mean, there's more I want to watch on here at some point. Like Pink Floyd's The Wall and The Rise of the Alt-Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's That's got to be a good one. That sounds like a really quality video right there. Um, I'm definitely going to have to watch that. And uh, But not right now. Not right now. Uh, that's enough of Literate Machine. I don't know who linked that one. There's a second article, too. Gamergate never died. It is only reborn. It's written by the same author, less than a month apart from the last game Gamergate article that he wrote. Uh, and it's more or less just the same thing. I mean, it's it's just... It's just him, like, going through a very biased, one-sided view of what Gamergate was. Uh, a, a factually incorrect view of what Gamergate was. But I guess the facts don't matter at this point because, I mean, for one thing, who gives a shit? And for another thing, a lot of those tweets are, like, gone now. A lot of the actual evidence of shit that was said back in the day, videos that were made, a lot of that's actually gone now. So it's hard to really trace back anything that far uh uh gamers didn't die oh man uh yeah um we're talking about the the gamer ga death of gamers thing social justice where i i can't bring myself to read more of this i can't i can't um it's just very stupid uh you know, uh i don't know i mean i'm going to make my video eventually that goes over it and uh, I mean, I'll just be called a, a right wing chud or whatever. I mean, the cycle fucking, it's just, it's just team politics to the end of time, basically, you know, uh, just ne never, never going to win. Uh, ne you're, you're never, we're never going to have a society where, where, I don't know, where <laughs> it's not just a bunch of bullshit. That's, that's my, that's my cool, super unique takeaway. That's my super original takeaway, just like Literate Machine and Anita Sarkeesian. Man, it's weird that they gender toys. And my version of that is, man, it's weird that society sucks. There you go. That's my original take right there. Um, moving along, and we are getting a little late. I'll probably stop at some point soon. Um, but we're going to move along here. I got a person that I've looked at before. We've got a little bit of a uh, a uh, little bit of an old friend here, people. Got a little bit of an old friend here. Haven't looked at him in a while. It's been almost a year, in fact. I think it was like April, May, or something of last year. Um, this is uh, an old friend. We've only looked at him one time, just the once. 
Um, and I'm excited to, to, to excited to bring you some more of his beats and his grooves. I hope, uh, Black Brains is here. I'm not a computer. I don't surpass the specs. I'm not equivalent. Got a lack. Yo. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yo. I'm not a computer. I don't surpass the specs. I'm not a equivalent. I will lack. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yo. Yeah. Yo. He is. He's here. You. You've got to get this guy on your next single. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm computer. I'm not a computer. I just wanna do my questions with my dad now. <laughs> He's always doing something else, not answering my questions. I get mad. I've never really seen somebody do rap, like, rap vlogs. Like, this is like a rap diary. That's kind of what this guy does. He, he, it's like a... It, I believe this is another new channel by him, by the way. He had, like, several channels last time. Uh, Henry, we want rant videos and vlogs. Yeah, we need him to make a video about the users. That's what the, that's what that comment is asking for. But I break stuff. He had several, he had several accounts before. Uh, you yeah, know, I've never seen a video before. I've never see, seen a channel that's quite like this guy where it's basically like a, a rap diary vlog. Feel sad. Yeah. I don't surpass the specs of efficient supercomputers. Yeah, I'm not equivalent to a hundred thousand computers. Yeah, I'm not able to process quicker than a computer. I mean, yeah. he's talking about computers. There's every chance he will say the word user. Yeah. Something that does a computation is not a computer. All right, buddy. My brain is not like a computer. I'm not similar like as or the same, same as similar. Yo, yo. Computer ga gotoku. Yo, yo. Janai. I don't compare to each other. I'm not the same. I'm not similar. I'm different in size and shape. Yeah. I'm not a computer. I don't surpass the specs of efficient supercomputers. I mean, I don't even know what to say in a video like this. You kind of just let them go, right? You just let it happen. So we got the brand new If I Compute I'm Not a Computer official music video. Okay, this one sounds like it might be different. That's basically the standard video for him. I am not a computer. I do not do processing in my brain. That's like basically what his videos usually are. Sometimes louder, different tones. Sometimes he'll be screaming in his backyard and he'll ha we'll hear a neighbor go, shut up. But uh, this one looks like it might be different because the other half of his channel tended to be really sad videos about how his dad doesn't understand him and they fight or something. Really depressing music. <laughs> so maybe that's what this one will be. Yo. Yo. Uh. Yo. What? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. I, all I wanna say is do it. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, yeah. It don't. It don't matter. I was arguing with Albert Einstein that the computer metaphor is wrong. That the brain is not like a computer. Yo. 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 All I do. He was arguing with Albert Einstein. I assume that this guy is the type of person who would be like really hard into AI. He'd probably be asking Albert Einstein AI all sorts of fucking questions about, is my brain a computer? Can I do processing? Can I do math? And the Albert Einstein AI would be like re responding to him saying that it's a very nuanced and complex issue and that the, the, the ethnicity of George Washington is multifaceted and has no clear answer. It's play, play, that's what I go around. All I do is take things seriously, yeah. Yo, yeah, yo, yeah, yo. I've been God. I've been, I've been God. Doing these drop down cards. 
It's amazing that it actually is on some kind of beat. I mean, like, it's not... It's not like it's just, like, random words being said with a beat happening. No, he is trying to rap it. It's just, like, very sparse rapping uh, about, you know, very repetitive subject matter a lot of the time. I was paying this one psychologist. Yo, 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 yo. From using the middleman to distribute my music. Yeah. Yeah. Arguing with Albert Einstein that the computer metaphor is wrong. Since your brain does not process information, it's in fact not a computer. I got it to keep it all away. Knowing that I gotta be so for real. I oh my god, he actually has like a... This is like a verse or something. This is just some... I gotta... Da -da 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 -da. Da 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 it's like, there's something happening people there's actually something happening to keep it all away knowing that i gotta be so for real i just say if i'm wondering about it yeah yeah yo, yo. uh you kind of lost it never mind gotta keep it understood gotta be under hood yeah yo yeah okay well this one seems like very similar to the last one henry um, I gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed. I, it's called Argument. I thought that this would be maybe a different subject matter, but it's okay, because I miss Katie and Tyler. Here's another one from Henry. I wanna see Katie and Tyler, and I miss Katie and Tyler, and I miss Katie and Tyler. Yeah, I miss my old people from the Kessler Center. I miss Katie, I miss Tyler, I miss April, I miss Stephanie. And I miss Amanda. I wanna see these niggas Is, just right now. Oh man, I um I think he he is I believe he can say that, but uh is is this like a Megan situation? Is this like is this like some dynamite gals? And I'm uh, is this like some wait, what was Chris's um uh gal pals? Is this some gal pals? Miss Amanda Dynamite Gal Pals. I wanna see these niggas right now. I miss Kitty and Tyler. Yeah, I wanna see these niggas right now. <laughs> I miss Kitty and Tyler. Yeah. Nigga, 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 come to my house and see. <laughs> That's a really good chorus, dude. Me, I wanna see Katie and Tyler. That's what I really want. This is a, it's a great, it's like, you make your chorus that, and it's just, oh, if I was black and a rapper, I would so make a song where it's just like, that is like, like white people just cannot even engage with it. Like it's every other word kind of thing. That would be the song. <laughs> That's what I really want to do. I want to see Katie and Tyler right now. Come to my house, man. Let me see you. Fella, 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 fella. I just want to see Katie and Tyler, fella. I want to see Katie and Tyler right now. Katie and Tyler right now. Yeah, I want to see April. I want to see Amanda. I want to see Emmanuel. Yeah. Oh, Emmanuel yeah. too. I still go to that school, the Kessler Center. Yeah. Metaphor. So actually, I could go and just see them. Uh, so why don't I just see them? Uh, this is really stupid. Why did I even make this song? Fella, 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 fella. Yeah. Yeah, I wanna see Katie and Tyler. Yeah, I wanna see Katie and Tyler. Nigga, 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 let me see you right now. Nigga, nigga, come to my house and check up on me. Nigga, 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 let me see you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come to my house and check up on me. <laughs> this is not the type of thing you usually hear in a rap song. <laughs> I wanna see Katie and Tyler. Katie and Tyler, ooh, I wanna see Katie and Tyler. Yeah, yeah, I wanna see Katie and Tyler. Katie and Tyler, 
I wanna see Katie and Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to the plunge and I'm mad with the savage. Living, I be loaded, not that sad when a bad bitch. Every single time a bad bitch got a click. Okay, okay, okay. He stopped saying words at this point. I'm convinced that he's not saying words now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, he has Caillou in one of his music videos. That's awesome. Yeah, I went to the plunge and I'm mad with the savage. Living, I be loaded, not that sad when a bad bitch. Every mm -hmm. Man with the savage living in the blah 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 the savage. Single time a bad bitch gotta play with me. Listen, did he just stop himself from saying bad bitch? I wanna be working on that wagon, living in a w working on that wagon. Still, you be talking on that instant, living out full with the one I'm gonna win. Man, I swear to God, there is nothing I can do to stop getting fucking recommended videos about Lily Orchard. I just don't care. I will never be made to care. I do not care. Jesus Christ. I, it's been years. Stop telling me about Lily Orchard. Who gives a shit? Holy shit. Oh, fucking hell. Okay, that's the video. Oh, okay. Well, that was a good one. Super duper with the big tooper. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, Henry JC. Here's a song of his. It's called I'm a Human in the Store. I'm a little bearer, I'm a little mirror, I'm not a computer for a living at Webman. If I compute, I'm not a computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I process information just like a. Uh, what? Did you say a slur? Yeah. I process information just like a. Did he say the R slur? I process information just like a pop. Yeah. yeah. Like a pop? Yeah. 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 If I compute, I am a. I'm Why a is he censoring himself? Just little carer. I'ma get it like it old bearer. I'm not a computer for a living at what? Okay, this is this is not this is not this is not the one. Um, don't try to box me in the place when I'm not a computer and I compute. This hurts my feelings. My dad will not give me a distro kid. Official music video. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, look. My dad will not give me a distro kid account. Yeah. I want a distro kid account. Yeah. I want a distro kid account. Yeah. I'm tired of my dad being busy, busy. I'm tired of my dad not being available. I'm tired of my dad being busy, busy. This is what, it, it, what did I tell you people? It's it, half of the channel is I am not a computer. And then the other half of the channel is, uh, is sad videos about how his dad sucks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and now I'm getting think before you sleep too. Jesus fucking Christ, people. If I could and tipster is get ah. Oh! Dude, I am not a computer. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like a yeah, yeah. computer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I compute, I'm not a computer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got no storage. I ain't got no processing in my brain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, this is what I remember from this guy is the weird, like, anti-flex of saying, I can't do processing, my brain cannot do math, I cannot compute things. Damn, dude, you don't have to, I mean, you're right, but, you know. Yo, 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 yeah, 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 if I compute, yeah. I'm not a computer, yeah, yeah. If I compute, I'm not a computer, yeah, yeah. I'm not like a mechanical computer, yeah, yeah. I've been in the put it in the boundary, yeah, yeah. I still don't know what he's all about. I mean, go break Charlie's computer. So he actually has people commenting on his videos now. It used to be one of those situations where it was, I think, just him commenting on his own videos with other accounts that would ha also have a bunch of videos. So I don't know where his other accounts are at this point. Uh, this is, seems to be a newer one, but I was confused last time we looked at this guy. Uh, I was confused the last time. I'm not a computer and I want to talk about, I think you have pal. Break other people's things featuring Caillou. More, it's the, it's the, it's the user version of like break shit.
Jesus fucking Christ. I have literally never even watched a single video about Lily Orchard. And I never will! Out of spite at this point. Just out of spite. No. Fuck off. Yeah. I'll break Charlie's computer. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna tell you arguing with my love song with my pretty Gucci girl. I love them. It's Katie and Tyler. I'm really today ready to have a day. Yeah. 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 Where is my niggas at? Where is my <laughs> niggas at? I want. I don't know where they are. Katie and Tyler. Yo. Oh, this is about Katie and Tyler again. Oh, okay. Well, I guess the previous call to action. Maybe it got age restricted. There was a lot of bad words in that video. Where are my niggas at? Where are my niggas at? I want back to at it. Tyler back to it again. All the time. I'm gonna keep it real for dope. I, I mean, I think he can. I'm making a rap song. Yeah. I'm a Brit, Charlie. And well, let's be fair here. Let's be let's be pedantic about it. Anyone can say it. It's just he probably is is uh, allowed to have fewer repercussions socially if he if he says it. Giovanni's stuff. I'm a Brit, Charlie's computer. I think. Yo. He's yo, very light. Yo. He's very light skinned, but I I think. Yo, 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 yo. I'm the whole wide boss, knowing what I do, I know what I do. This is my house, I can party and do whatever I want. I'm a brick Charlie. Somebody's coming up with their own lyrics in chat. They go, um, I'm in a polycule, in a polycule. They are cuties too, polycule, polycule. User, 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 user. Um... Which, um, I think they, those, that's kind of like, you know, like a, a new addition added to the song when it gets remade, like 10 years later or something, you know, but that's like the new verse that they add and it doesn't quite fit the same way, but like, it's the same spirit. It's the same spirit of the same, the song, you know, I didn't see where Caillou shows up on that one, but yeah. Um, oh, well, that's Henry JC and he is, um. He might be a computer. I'm not certain. I'm not certain about that. Um, let me see here. I have some more stuff saved here, I think. Um, let's see. Did I look at you? I did, I think. I think I looked at him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I looked at this guy. Um, did I look at you? Uh, no, you've got too many subs. I, I, I might look at you, maybe. But at this point in time, too big of a channel. Not, not, not underground enough. We need the quality shit. So here's one that I found. Is this good? No, I think this one might not be good. This one might not be good indeed. I got recommended a stream that looked kind of weird and suspicious, but I don't know, man. I think Ryan might be, he's just all about fun and inform. So uh, I think he might be informing us uh, about fun. Ryan explains the human, oh, it's a clip. It's like he got clip chimped, I guess. He, the human anatomy was the, the way that sentence ended. Um, uh, yeah, this guy just does Ryan Carmichael show. He invites a bunch of um. <laughs> Um, um, so, so Ryan Carmichael does these streams and, um, I do more things to you too. I think it might be people making fun of them. I think that's what we're looking at here. I think it might be people making fun of them. If I had to guess. Oh yeah, no, there's gay there's there's Segex. Uh, one of the frames here features Segex. Um there's there's some hardcore Segex happening in one of these frames. Let me just see here. Um 
Let me see. Yeah, somebody is like porn spamming him, I think. Oh, yeah. B, why did you kick me out? Oh, yeah, there's some Sagax happening. Um, there's also a femboy on screen. There's also what appears to be a, um, uh, uh, Ryan Carmichael Isis beheading himself. That's that's one of the people on the Zoom call. But yeah, one of them is two um two brothers um uh Sagexing each other and and uh, uh both of them have Ryan, uh, Ryan Carmichael's uh, head on their bodies. Um so so yeah, I, I would assume that that's um that this uh community is uh, uh mainly just kind of making fun of this guy. I don't know. Uh Seems like he's uh, probably not uh, uh, the best person to be making fun of necessarily, but uh, uh, yeah, that was just one. Th that that one appeared to me on my my home page. I said, well, oh, "This seems weird." And I clicked on it, and yeah, not something I need to watch necessarily. But it looks like definitely a community of uh, blue spikes might be uh, might be surrounding him a little bit. Oh yeah, I guess I already did save Kalobi Productions like a month ago, I, and I forgot about that. Never got around to it. Um, looking through my thing here. Oh well, here's somebody we looked at. I wonder what he's been up to. Uh, not much. Damn. What a shame. You guys, remember Stexen Starfighter, the guy who cried about? Uh, oh, I forget his name. I, I forget the name of the friend of his that uh was like not being not complying with him but he, he was basically in love with this friend of his and he was a super sentai guy he doesn't have a lot of new content or anything but i mean Ovaline, you have yet to even scratch the surface of what we're capable of let's do it show oh me oh yeah, Aiden, that's right, that was the name, Aiden. Get us in! Well, you know, he's that! Oh no, he's doing this. What I love now is that the Yakuza series is popular enough that almost every new game in the series has, like, a side story that features, like, a fat white guy speaking Japanese who, who, who just loves Japanese culture so much that he, he perseveres through the bullying. And that's what we're looking at right now. Hang on, I've got the I've got the perfect music for this. I've got the hang on. Good show. Oh, me Tian is it? Well, you know he's that. Good to that pants. Ginga, victory. Ginga victory. Oh, guys. You know what emote we need to use. Oh my god. Oh my god, maybe white men are 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 violent. Jesus Christ. He gave up on that one. Let me the power of three lights on Trinity. Okay, lend you the power of a fanny pack or like a belt. Lend you the power of a better fitting shirt. Lend you the power of a treadmill and time. Does this count as interpretive dance? 
メリーピカイシュートいやいいスワレンゴミクリスタルセイトクリスタルスパイモンスコツリハッマトウキワミコキリオンジュ Yeah, Kiwami! Yeah, right into the moves! I'm sorry, what was that noise you were just making? Don't do the sound effects, buddy. Don't do the sound effects. The sound, it, that's not good, the sound. Don't do. That's not. Stick with the Japanese. Charging his dark autism form. Yeah, don't stop him now. I can hit the enemy stuff. I always, I always get a kick out of the people who ask questions like, "Why are there stains on the shirt? Why is his hair so greasy?" The the question of why. Like you know why. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the wrong phrasing. What you want is maybe more like a, oh god, it's so greasy. Oh god, that stain. But we know why the stain's there. We know why the hair is greasy. We know. Now it's time for me to get serious. Oh, he's not Are serious yet. Yeah, he said Nigai. He definitely can't say it. Listen, Eggman Nigai is a legit Sonic character. We want power. And he is an angered person. To war, men! To war! Oh, that's the video? Damn. Would he beat Vinnie Joel? I mean, this guy and Vinnie Joel. We There's a lot of jokes that are made about, like, Sonic Sega Gamer should pal around with the Origami Kingdom. No, legitimately, this guy, I think, would be a a real boon to the Vinnie Joel, like, wrestling fandom thing. Because, I don't know, I know it's, it's different, but I feel like they could both get along pretty well. You know, the Super Sentai stuff and the, and the wrestling fandom stuff, it's... I feel like it's close enough that, you know, it could be the same type of thing. Here's this one. Opaline. Same day, same outfit, people. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Narcana. That is enough. It's Morphin time. Oh God, no, not Morphin time. Finish you up for good. God, not Morphin time. Nexus. Swan. No, you're right. I'm giving him too much credit by assuming that just because he's wearing the same outfit that this was released on the same day. It could have been weeks apart, really. Cosmos! One... Mebius! He's knocking over furniture with the gun. All right. 
right, men? The only option is to hit him in the gut where it counts! Do not fire until I tell you to fire! Ready, men? Aim! And... Fire! So is that racist? <laughs> the part of the routine that's just him going, ah! <laughs> I mean, the whole rest of it. You know, he's like screaming or whatever, but this is the one part. X! <laughs> I guess X, alright. But with the music, I, I, all I heard was, ah! And he just. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only part you hear when you're walking down, you know, on street level and you just hear some muttered Japanese and then ah! <laughs> All right, okay. Okay, I haven't been doing the bingo so far tonight, but this is bingo material. You're right. You're right. Um let me see here. Let me see here. I'm going to open up the bingo. I'm gonna open up the bingo because uh, oh yeah no this is the name I saw somebody came up with this name earlier today while the chat was conspiring against me to create a bingo um, a, an evil bingo against me an evil bingo that makes fun of me uh, how could they um, uh, but they they came up with a pretty good one aqua tard uh, user force yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a pretty good title. Um, and we're generating a card. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Take this to a uh, new window here. And um, go back here. Do, do, do. Okay. Hang on there, Stexon. Hang on there, buddy. We're going to get back to you in a second, Stexon. Don't worry. Aquatard user force down here. I'm just gonna go ahead and generate a bingo card. And we'll go through it. You can mark stuff that we've already hit on this guy. Uh, th this bingo will extend to Stex and Starfighter only. If you've seen something that deserves a bingo space for St Stex and Starfighter here, the man making these poses, then please mark it down on your bingo. You know, posthumously or whatever. Please mark it down uh, uh, as a late bingo sp space. You know, you're a little late to the party with it, but you got it. You got it. Gonna generate my. Ooh, 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 gonna generate my card here. Uh, this user. Um, let me see here. Bad hair, long pauses. Um, hmm. Is he, it could be multiple characters. I think it might technically be multiple characters. I'm going to say it's multiple characters. Only finger or hand in frame? No. Uh, retard Sage Wisdom? No. I don't care. They do. N no. Not yet. Um, insanity Problems. Um, actually Frightening. Uh, no, I'm not getting a bingo, but other people might get a bingo. I mean, okay, congratulations if you can f if you can manage a bingo on this one. Ultraman victory! Victory! Ultraman victory! Ultraman victory! Ultraman Ginga! 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 Oh yeah, fatherless behavior. I mean, that's practically a free space, really. Ultra Warrior! Steven, stop shouting. Yes! Guys, it happened! We got Mom on video, people! That's right! Mom telling the kid to shut up! He's not a kid, he's in his 20s or 30s! God damn it, we got it! Please. <laughs> we can't be doing this at all hours of the night! It's not all hours of the night, but whatever. <laughs> 
Go to the bathroom and take a shit now, Stexon. <laughs> Hell yeah, you should be a voice actor. And then Len and then there's a whale, no offense. None taken. Yes, yeah. Orlando here. Elizabeth and Griffin. So Orlando, he's he's into kaijus and dinosaurs forever. Um um and seems to be a fairly insufferable channel. Who are you? Oh, you're a child. Okay. Um, channel Princess Twilight Sparkle. Um, are you also a child? Yeah, I think you're also a child. There's ponies. It's probably also a child. Um, and then this person, they just like to watch. But, man, that was great. That was a good video. I'm glad we clicked on that one. I'm so glad we clicked on that one. That was a that was a good video. That was a good video. That was a fucking class. That was a, that was a new classic. That would be that would be that one there. The Ultraman Nexus and Geed Orb are whatever the fuck. This one. Uh, if you want this one, if you want to, if you want to download and save this video for your own purposes, maybe put this in a funny video you make and edit yourself. Uh, maybe that would be. That's a that's some good memes. He's got more of this here. <laughs> Can no shirt contain the gun? Amazing. Oh my goodness! How does it get worse? Levels over 9,000! Just gotta aim and pull the trigger! He's got the evoker ready! Per. So now! Alright, he's just taking a break! He's taking a breather! You gotta catch his breath! <laughs> he's doing monkey gestures now! Oh, he's got one of those. It's all over, Lawbreaker. Have a <laughs> Curse, yeah, yeah! Oh, the gun. Oh, so much gun. Okay, is his mom going to tell him to shut up before we stop, though? Because that would be great. Hang on. Hang on. Because well, that could be a common occurrence. That could just be a common occurrence. That could just be a common occurrence. Zenkaisa! <laughs> Well, Tim and Jay Smith, I hope you enjoyed that video I did. That's my whole team of the Avatar Sentai Dunblood Team Transformation. <sighs> He's very tired out now. Uh, really tuckered. He's tuckered. He tuckered himself really badly there. Um, <clears throat> yes, Texan is a fun individual. He, uh, he, uh, he does voice lines. I mean, this is classic userism. 
charged by the system for murder in the rhythm. Uh, he, he is, uh, he is a train boy. He is a Sentai lad. He is a train boy. He is a Sentai guy. He is a user. He is friends with Astro Boy. That's right, everybody. He is friends with... This user. It, 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 that's right, people. It turns out that we don't. We have a new enemy in town. We don't have a new enemy in town. This is a known enemy. It's it's a friend of Astro Boy's. He's friends with this user. Um, well, this one's from three weeks ago. What's this one? Hey, Ninja Mar Wallace. I guess we gotta watch the update vlog after this, too. A request from you? Seriously, I'm getting fucking tipster recommended to me again. This is fucking nonsense. Jesus goddamn Christ. Three is he scratching his asshole? Hey, Ninja Mar Wallace. A request from you, too? Oh, yeah, he is. Three King That's a big ass scratch. With your help. Anyway? It's morphin' time! Do you think this shirt will be able to contain the gun? I mean, are we gonna even see? Oh yeah, I think it might contain it. It does! It's the shirt! Low energy in this one! I don't think... I don't think his mom is letting him... Okay, well, okay, we were... We were over... We were... We... The music was overpowering the sword that apparently makes sound. Yeah. So it plays like the fucking... It plays like some music. It plays like the theme song for whatever this is. Come on, see you. Sa This is another. There's another user over here. Uh, we're we're getting sidebarred again, everybody. Damn! I even called it out at the end of the video. I knew I was getting sick. Dual wield demo. Here it is, people. He's wield. Oh. This is multi-track wielding, everyone. Oh boy. Hey, Force sensitives. I'm Darth Magic. Force sensitives, everybody. Let's welcome to my little playground. I like to call my living room. Uh, today we're doing a Jarkai or a Magnakai, if you will. Uh, ten move demonstration. That's it. All right. So let's get through. Uh huh. With this I'll refrain from using. Hey, cuties. My saber, so you guys can hear my instructions all the way until the final demonstration. Start off in a position like so. You're gonna do a lead jab body. Yeah, this guy seems like he can live, at least. I mean, like, he's got stuff on his walls, he's got, you know, he's in, in shape a little bit. He doesn't seem like a user. It seems like, I mean, it. as much as I wanna make fun of the guy for looking a little bit like he's, like he's doing a Star Wars kid or whatever, I mean. Followed by a rear back hook head into another lead and you're gonna go high block, slightly back up into a mid block left, rear hook head, lead back hook head, then you're gonna jab the abdomen. I mean, I mean, it's very, uh, it's very thorough if you want to um, do whatever he's doing here. Here, <clears throat> I guess this is sort of like a thing that you could, like a choreography thing that you could sort of practice. Go through these steps, and you could do like your routine or whatever. I mean, I gotta be honest, dude, to 99% of people, if you just waved the thing around for a little bit, it would probably look the same, but, I mean, whatever, whatever makes you happy, I guess. 
What makes you happy? Um, yeah, we're all about Stexin over here, though. This is what we're all about. Okay, Busto! Yeah, no, that guy doesn't have sound effects, though, so fuck him. Um, let's watch the update vlog from Stexon. He's gonna talk to us. What's going on, gamers? Stexon Star over here. Welcome back Sup, to gamer. another vlog video today. As you can possibly tell, uh, I need to start doing more vlogs for the channel. Vlogs have kind of gotten less frequent on the channel recently in the last few days. So, I guess I'm doing vlogs from now on. Or at least have them be a part of the channel at some point. <laughs> oh my god. Do I have, like, announcement video? Or, no. Oh, man, I don't have any good fucking squares on this bingo. This sucks. Except all the ones that I marked off. Those are good ones. All the rest of the squares, objectively bad squares. Like, drama. This is an objectively bad square that would never be marked for any reason. Terrible square. Should be removed from the bingo, really. Um, <clears throat> no, but, um, uh, yeah, no, if you have, like, Sorry for not making videos, guy. This guy does a lot of those. I remember that now. The last time we looked at him, he did a... F he, we looked at, like, multiple videos in a row that were all... Sorry I stopped making videos! And I have some big project news coming up this weekend. I plan to do a Sonic X Shadow Generations game let's play once it comes out. I'm really excited for that. So that'll be coming sure out. Sure you so are, for that. Um, there will be a Sonic Heroes Let's Play at some point. I promise you, gamers, there will be one oh. something so awesome you guys will love. It's going to be so awesome. Well, it's Sonic Heroes, dude. Let's not say it's going to be so awesome. Let's let's keep let's keep expectations nice and low for Sonic Heroes, man. It's not bad. It's not that bad or anything. I'm just saying, don't keep the expectations low, and then you're going to be pleasantly surprised by how not bad it is. It's not great, though. It's it's not great. It's don't, it's not, it's not super exciting, though. And, um, there will possibly be Star Fox Adventures, a Let's Play of that as well. Mm -hmm. Then there'll be, um, Star Fox oh. Zero, Sonic Riders, Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. <laughs> I will be keeping promises, including Super Smash. Is Bros. Sonic on, a, on the bingo? Like it should be, right? S Sonic is like just so just Sonic, just like straight up just Sonic. I I feel like that would be good because then sometimes it could be somebody in a in a Sonic restaurant, and then it could still be relevant somehow too. There's melee. Let's play as well. Maybe brawl. Who knows? Okay, Sonic is a square. Good. So make sure you all stay tuned for that. And uh, do Super Dream Zenki? I wanted to ask this. Um, I planned to do like a recording, uh, lines be prepared for the Common Rider Ultimate <laughs> Superhero Time movie. So I'm hoping it'd be alright if I could Wait, do that. Is, what is wrong with his? I yeah. haven't seen what's wrong with his teeth. And people keep saying to brush his teeth. What's wrong with his teeth? I want to do, like, um, a Paw Patrol chase interview using recordings of StreamYard and... God, Sony. now that I've seen some footage of Paw Patrol from that insane Spurg Lords video about Paw Patrol, it's really funny to now see some of the people that watch Paw Patrol and recognize just how baby that show looks like it is. I mean, I guess I knew it was, but, like... It doesn't even look like a good baby show. It looks like a really generic show with really cheap 3D animation. So I, I guess this guy lo loves it though. Top, big big time Paw Patrol fan. Came up on YouTube. Is there, are his teeth so, yellow? I I guess I don't really notice it. I mean, I guess I just kind of assume it's just, it's assumed for someone like this, you know. I'm hoping that'd be all right. Uh, leave a comment if that'd be okay. I think I'm more focused on the literal neck beard. And gamers, y'all are awesome. God bless y'all and be safe. This is Stexus. Okay, statistically, not all of the gamers are awesome. Look at him doing a Nazi salute right here. I can't believe it. Um, okay. That's Stexon. And um, let me see here. Let's see here. 
So some people were wondering about a certain individual. The last time that we looked at uh, Stexen Starfighter, there was a person who... Um, Stexen's... It, it became a very, a very popular video, you see, because Stexen Starfighter... Uh, well, it became a very, a very popular segment on that stream, rather, because Stex and Starfighter had a live stream that he did that we found where he was complaining about a friend of his, uh, a friend by the name of Aiden, who, uh, due to some strange issue that they had with each other, uh, they had suffered a falling out, uh, over, like, a joke related to the Wiggles, and, um... Over the course of time, it became very clear that Stex and Starfighter was very emotionally attached to this Aiden individual. And uh, Aiden is here, everybody. Aiden's here. Uh, at first, I thought Aiden was 12 in this thumb this uh, this avatar, but then you see the thumbnails of him. He He's an adult. He is an adult. Um, they had a falling out at some point, but they seem to have reinvigorated, they rekindled the spark of romance. Uh, they are friends again. As of six hours ago, he's he's tagged in one of these videos here. Let's watch some of these. Um, oh man, we got some user rants here. It looks like we got some user rants here, people. Maximus Danger Dragon has gotten in, uh, has run afoul of the the Change Dragon community. <laughs> you Rangers have failed. To defeat me with all four keys in this Chaos Emerald, I can become Chaos Cinder. This is your worst nightmare, Rangers. Say goodbye, Chaos. Planets. Now you're just showing us footage from this movie. Hang on. Wait, I forgot that this was a community of people that, like, fucking mashed together footage of movies and just... This is Pooh's Adventures, basically. Ready! Ninja Spin! Speed! Speed! Yeah, it's just a bunch of shit and then a pony every now and then. That's right, this, the, the YouTube pony is here. The YouTube cutie mark pony is here. Get in gear! Oh my god, guys, look. It's too real. It's too real. Change dragon! They're all changing. And, um, and then at some point he'll show up on camera for like a second. Maybe not. Oh, maybe not. But Arthur does. Hey guys, listen to me. You gotta hear what I'm saying. Okay, I didn't see this. I did not see this coming, everybody. Um, we have, uh, six, 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 six viewers watching right now, by the way. Welcome. Welcome. You got that sparkle deep inside. You got a talent we're displaying. And we just need a little hope. I like that the Paw Patrol, the fight boy from Paw Patrol has, um, like, Goku hair. He has, like, anime protagonist hair. It's, like, spiky, like, shonen protag hair. This user. How do you survive that blast? Oh yeah, this guy. No one can do that. No one can survive my. Guys, it's chaos this guy. Blast. Because I have hope, and I have friendship. Do you fucking remember the ginger that was doing this? I guess he's coming up next. Pyro. And a bunch of Japanese people. Okay, 
Hey, oh, guy. I accidentally went to the start. God damn it. Well, I guess we'll have to watch it all again. Cause we got the magic, we got the magic in us. Cause we got the magic, we got. Not Fyro! Yeah, I know. Uh. Now is the time to raise your voices. You know it's time to show your courage. Yeah, and no pony's gonna. Man, this is what TikTok looks like to um, everyone. This is what TikTok looks like, basically. This is basically just, this is more, more or less just TikTok. So, so he's going to stop the villain by singing this song, I guess, and then the villain's going to be uh, beaten. Uh, is this, is the villain Maximus Danger Dragon? Thumb yeah, this is the guy, everyone. It's him. Oh, does he have some new change video? He does! Bro, we're so fucking... We are... It is so bad. We are so back. <laughs> you rangers are now finished. Darkness! Slam! <laughs> Final attack. Rodeo dark shot. Great. Fire. Oh my god. Oh what? my god, he chose to fucking upload this. They're still moving forward? Rodeo dark shot. Shoutouts to the name of the channel, by the way. Um Ultra Maximus Dragon The Shadow. I like that. Not the hedgehog. The shadow. Specifically, the shadow. The the shadow, the hedgehog, I guess, would be more appropriate. Huh? Yeah, we're what all dead. Is this, power? <laughs> this user is the master swordsman. I got one thing up my sleeve. <laughs> the Chaos Emerald? Shield. No. Impossible. The Emerald, it's breaking. No. 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 It was Cubic Zirconia this whole time. No. 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 This is not good. Somebody asks, did he Columbine? No, but he sh Um, no, he didn't. You rangers may have won, but there will be others that will defeat will. you. Oh. It's an autistic liquid snake. Um. Um. Yeah. Um, uh, Ultra Maximus here. What a great banner. This is such a great banner. We can see up his nose a little bit. It's awesome. It's such a good banner. It's almost like he did it on purpose. Almost like this description of his, his about, you can overcome any. That's the about. That's it. Great, great channel, man. I love, I love Change Dragon, man. He's, he's, he's awesome. Let's do this one. Hold her right there. My friends are fighting the prince now. I'm your opponent. Your evil ways end here. Once and for all. Yeah, he might miss her anime. Scatter shot! <sighs> Go animate is on the card, that's true. <sighs> Ain't done yet! Sonic shot! Well, this is clearly just more of the same thing. That's very disappointing. What about this one? That's a lot of X-Borgs. I'm not sure we're ready, you guys. That's so many X-Borgs, guys! But I'm mega pumped! Whoa. They're all here. All <laughs> the members of Sentai. Tuh. And Obama. What are the chances? <laughs> He just kind of forgets that it's a sword toy and not a gun. Oh. 
Dino, supercharge, ultimate blast, fire! Well, at least he's quiet and not, you know, he's doing the inside scream. Mark that on your bingos if you have it. He's doing the whisper scream. He's doing the mom, the mom's gonna freak scream. So he's, he's quiet, he, you know, he's, he's keeping quiet so mom doesn't wake up. <laughs> Preparing final attack. Final attack, people! Supercharge, lightning, strike! Wow, that one hurt. Yes! We did it! That was legendary! Looking cool, Joker! Yeah, the part at the end where he, like, he turns off the video. That's always a good, it's always a good moment. Um, well, that'll probably do it for the stream, I think. We've been going for a little while. Um, not too long. Uh, not too, too long tonight. Uh, but I want to order some food and, you know, I think that'll be, I think that'll be fine. Uh, we'll probably do another one tomorrow, potentially. Actually, tomorrow I might be playing Final Fantasy VII Remake 2, uh, which I think is officially now like Final Fantasy VII 3, technically. Because the remake is just a sequel, so th this one's just... Th it's, this one's Final... F I'm, they're making Final Fantasy VII 3 tomorrow, so I might, I might be busy. But, like, um... Uh, if, 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 if not, uh, if I can't get a hold of it or whatever, or if I, uh, you know, get mad about yellow paint, then maybe I'll stream. Uh, two bucks for Mataru, uh, Mata Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time. Well, I, I never had Majora's Mask. Uh, let me play some, some music here. I never had Majora's Mask as a kid. Uh, and I find the whole, uh, fucking... I find the whole process of, um, oh shit, I don't know, let's do, you know what, let's do, uh, fuck. Yeah, let's do some Sims busting out music, hell yeah. Console busting out, even. Um, um, Majora's Mask, I find the whole time travel thing to be kind of fucking annoying. I mean, in the times that I have played it. Uh, it's, it's a little bit, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really too interested in playing Majora's Mask, I've seen people play it, and I've also kind of gotten bored of watching people, like, like, I've watched people like Vinny, and I think before that I watched Nintendo Capri Sun playing it, and both times, I think I got to around the same part in both, both playthroughs, and I, I got bored. So, no, I mean, I guess I, I, I side with, uh, 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 Ocarina on that one, just because that's the one that I had. Um, two bucks from Ren Masao Tome. I hope you stream at this time more often if you can. Well, I only streamed late today because I was, um, because I was, uh, fucking playing a zombie Yakuza game all day. Uh, but, you know, I was, uh, I'm, I'm happy to come to you at this time, at this time of need. You know, that... That's that that fills me with joy and and semen. Uh, three months membership from Ron Masatome. I've been watching your stream so much I've picked up your laugh. I can't phonetically type it out, but you know the one. I don't know the one. I have a few laughs. I have the one. I mean, I mean the one. I guess the most common one. It's new for me. I never used to laugh this way, but for some reason nowadays I really do the. <laughs> I do, I do like a Jimmy Carr laugh. I don't know where that came from. Uh, that happens a lot. Um, but then the, uh, the other, I, there's the big laugh where I really break down. And then there's the Joker laugh I do sometimes. And then I have the, the sort of, <laughs> I have like a Seth Rogen laugh. I really have a series of laughs. I've got a very, I've got a very diverse range of laughter. You all wish that your laughs were as good as mine, frankly. My laughs do everything you need a laugh to do. At any point in time, I got your laugh needs covered, motherfucker. I got the best laughs in the game. Um, let me see. You're, you frankly, you probably don't have my laugh, but you'd be lucky if you did. 
You should be thankful that your laugh is similar enough. Five bucks from Joey T. Raccoon. Claw, please watch the Mario vs. Sonic rap battle and then our drawings. It's important for the lore. The drawings? I don't even know what you're fucking talking about, cunt. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> your drawings? Was this a thing on the server? I don't- I'm not familiar- what do you mean, our drawings? Oh, 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 from Kalobi Productions, I think. Yeah, those were- those were videos on that channel. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, our drawings is the full- <laughs> the full movie that they made, right? It's an hour long. Oh, yeah, no, I remember- I remember I pointed out that this looks like, um... The monster from Monster by Mistake, the the old Canadian cart 3D cartoon from like 2000. Uh, but he's got like bunny ears. He's got he's pamper chew maxed. Uh, yeah, I'll probably watch more of this channel at some point. Uh, that sounds that sounds good. Very odd channel. Oh, but but importantly, guys, guys, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop the music. Stop the music. Stop the music. Hang on. Kalobi Productions is a fucking art tracer! I can't believe you would do the worst thing that you can do! What the fuck, bro? What the fuck? That's cringe! That's cr You just did a cringe! Fuck off, bro! <sighs> totally didn't use AI. They made it with AI, too. Oh. Mm, ooh. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, more content to come. Many, many days, many, many Mondays, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me see here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, no, I read this super chat and I was so confused. It was just like, please watch the Mario and Sonic rap bell and then our drawings. Wait, wait, what the fuck? I, I called you a cunt and everything. No, but oh, uh, that's fair. That's all. That's all fair. Um, that's all fair. Two bucks from, uh, Ianey as a channel recommendation. Barba Swingle. Barbara Swingle. Okay, then. Let me look. Swingle. Um, okay, she's... Okay, there's an... I stand with his real, uh, av avatar. It's like a... It's like a... It's like a Jew star. Uh, with, it says I stand with Israel. Um, well, okay. This person seems, this person seems to, to look depressing. They look, that's one of these people where I look at their videos and I just feel depressed. But, yeah, you know what, I'll save it for later, sure. I'll bring down chat with that one, why not? Why not, why not? It, it seems kind of promising. It might be depressing and funny. Five bucks from James Gentry. I believe I've seen a video this guy made defending shop limiting because fuck capitalism and communist manifesto shit. Yeah, it's people like him that make me sad to have enjoyed Disco Elysium. You know? Just by proxy. Just by association. Um, you, you hate to see it. 674 from Exile Postman. To be fair, Paw Patrol is probably the mo most politically charged show he actually watches. Well, I mean, it seems it's a weird channel where most of what he talks about is like a bunch of fucking, like, Loki Marvel lore. But also, he's like a super socialist or whatever. I don't know, man. You don't need to watch every Marvel product. If, uh, this is coming from a Marvel fan. You don't need to watch every Marvel product. If you're gonna be like a, like a, like a comrade, you know? Like a real Leninist or whatever the fuck. Uh, five bucks from Small Asian. Holy tortellini, this guy sounds like my old high school English teacher, and that guy had more personality than a wet towel compared to this dude. Yeah, uh, again, that guy's videos were, like, very dry college videos, like, you know, college thesis kind of shit. I wonder if you could make a college essay, like, like, your, 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 your actual real thesis for a school and just make it, like, a YouTube video. Just make it a four hour long YouTube video that's really boring and stuffy and dry and has nothing of interest in it. And it's all like really basic information that kind of anybody, anybody vaguely aware of the field would probably be aware of. Um, 
Five pounds from Tapeworm. No, Claw, but, but, but Timmy Two Year needs to understand the evils of capitalism. The Paw Patrol clearly must be sent to Siberia, comrade. I am very intelligent. Uh, don't look in my to be sorted folder. Um, five bucks from Eric Soul. When you think you're a real highbrow critic, observing the underlying propaganda, the medium, but you're reviewing the politics on Paw Patrol. Yeah. Uh. No, it makes sense to, you know, there's a lot of propaganda out there, and there's a lot of politics and a lot of stuff, and stuff doesn't get made in a vacuum. It's worth looking at something like... It's why I wasn't complaining when he was pointing out the propaganda in, in, like, you know, network television, because it's like, well, yeah, for a long time, and even now to an extent, it was very normal for the main sort of fucking TV program to just be like, the police, the the quirky police department that solves crimes and, you know, doesn't follow the law all the time. And, you know, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a thing you can point out. I, I didn't have a problem with that. You know, talking about law and order or something. Sure, yeah, make a video about that. But, you know, instead it's talking about Paw Patrol. That's where it gets, that, that's where it gets real fucking stupid is the problem. Um... Ten bucks from, um, Mr. Krabs, 5-5. Five five. I'd like to request a guy for you to talk about. He has a KF thread and an ED page. It's Dev Cat Scratch. He wants adult toys of Helga from Hey Arnold, and he's a total D-Gen. Now, what does that mean, adult toys of Helga? Like a flashlight based on her, her pussy? I, I guess. Uh, I guess. I don't know how you would do that. It's a cartoon. It's kind of, it's, it's like, just use any flashlight and be like, oh, Helga. Uh, unless he wants, like, a sex doll based on Helga? Maybe? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what does it, is she, is she, isn't she the one that also has the football head? She's the, she's the girl, well, I don't know if she, she I don't think she also has a football head, but she's the girl from Hey Arnold, she's. Yeah, no, I'm just imagining, like, somebody trying to fuck a sex doll based on her. Man, tell me it's 2024 without saying we're in 2024. Um, Nightshade has become a member. Thank you. 10, uh, 943, I almost rounded you up, Postman, but I shouldn't. Exiled Postman, 943. I think this is what all those parents and teachers meant when they told kids that watching cartoons all day would rot their brains. Nobody listened. Apparently not, no. People had trouble with that one. That one did not get through to a lot of people. Uh, yeah, no. Um, you know, it'll rot your brain. You'll become an adult who talks about politics, but you still can't stop talking about fucking Paw Patrol and other, like, baby shows. You know. Um... Two bucks from Lizzie Husky. Oh, brother, where art thou is my favorite movie. Uh, I don't even remember the movie that well. I mean, I remember seeing it at some point as a youngin', but I don't really remember it that well. It's, uh, I think it has George Clooney in it. George Clooney! Um, um, I mean, I don't remember it that well. I think they jump out of a train at some point. I don't know, I'm just searching for user puns at this point. If I stuck with stuff that I'm actually familiar with, though, that would be... That would be problematic. I mean... I know, I should... I probably should. Those are the best user puns, are the ones that hit closest to home. That's why the best stream I've done recently was Like a User Infinite Trash. But, uh... You know, for want of that... Oh, oh user, where art thou works, I think. Uh... Let me see here. Um, Ten bucks from Princess Ashley. Just went and saw my grandpa. We specifically talked about and listened to music from Oh Brother Where Art Thou tonight. <laughs> Seeing your thumbnail afterwards kind of spooked me. Yeah, I'm sorry to have, to all the oh, oh Brother Where Art Thou chads in the audience. I, uh, I'm not familiar. I don't remember the movie that well. I think I saw it on TV at one point, but... I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a filthy poser looking for user puns that work for me. 
Uh, it's not even really a pun, is it? I don't think it's a pun. I don't know what you would call this type of title. User-style titles. Um, two bucks from Mikey Jesus in bad poetry form. Because I'm a game. I don't know what that means. In bad poetry form? I, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm imagining a bad slam poet trying to trying to talk their poetry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of seeing what you mean. Uh, let me see here. Two bucks from Autistic Wolf. Only guy I can say is violently boring to me. Yeah, the dude was... The dude had a unique method of, uh, making the audience fall asleep. Uh, but I don't... That, do, that doesn't sig signal me to stop watching a channel. You know? Like, for me, it's... It's like... You might be violently boring, but that's... That's uniquely entertaining in a way, though. Like, in its own... In its own way. You're so boring, it's funny. To me. Um... Five bucks from Dr. Grubius. Shout out to H. Bomber guy who thinks legitimately that Doom is about how evil Christians and capitalism is. Real hard thinkers on this planet Earth. Yeah, I don't want to live on planet Earth anymore. I don't know what the deal is with H. Bomber guy. He manages to be so... Say so many stupid things and believe so many stupid things and... And have a history of saying dumb things and... And yet... And yet he makes videos that are pretty good. And I mean, I agree with most of what I've heard him say about Deus Ex, you know, and Fallout too. I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the, really real stopped stopped watch type of person, stop clock type of person. Uh, Fox McLeod, uh, member for seven months. Thank you very much. Eggs. Oh God, I broke it. Oh, I broke it. Oh, I broke the soundboard. Well, I mean, I need to refresh it. Hang on. No, yeah, I broke the soundboard. Open it up. Come on. All right. Okay. Hang on. Um. Eggs! 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 <sighs> I tried to play three at once there is the problem, so it crashed the soundboard. Yeah. Thank you. Um... Um, uh, Fox McCloud has been a member for seven months. Cl Yo, Claw, it's Ember. Just wanted to say, fuck them. Fuck them, indeed. You missed us playing a game last night. We didn't wind up doing Cyberpunk because multiple people were not well. Uh, and, uh, and so we wound up doing, uh, Goblins with Fat Asses. And we robbed a train. And, um, I think, what did I do? I might... My roll, uh, I rolled for what my, my inventory was for my goblin. And, uh, what my, one of my inventory items was the pocket contents of a guard. And so I was like, so what does the guard have on him? And Sleepy the DM went, what do you think a guard would have on him? And I went, well, I think a guard would have, if I was guarding something, I know I would have a whistle that summons an attack tiger. And, uh, he let us do that, and so I just, we, and then we rode away, we enlarged our attack tiger, and we rode away from the train on our attack tiger. His name was Thrumbo, by the way. It was a good time, it was a good time, it's a shame you missed it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta stream some of these, uh, maybe some of these one-shot games at some point. I think that could be fun, if people are down for it anyway. Two bucks from Alan Sampson. Claw, please read the article he showed, it is bad. It was pretty bad, yeah. Uh, two bucks from Autistic Wolf. Guy's PFP looks like he's enjoying his own fart. It's, it, that's what I said earlier, yeah. He's even got the little fucking, like, glass bubble over his fe fucking he head, so it's, it's like, it's keeping it in there, you know? It wafts up through the spacesuit, and then, you know, he can smell it. Um, let me see here. Um, two pounds from Niall Scott. I miss Katie going on my next DJ set. Yeah, don't forget the the chorus. It goes hard, goes hard in Croatia. They they it's un, they say unspeakable. It's unspeakable in Croatia. Let me just tell you. Um, two uh five bucks from Celius. Googled it. The center he mentioned is a private school for the developmentally disabled. Unsurprisingly, oh I kind of assumed that. Yeah, but he, what's weird is he said he still goes there. So it's like he still goes to the school. I don't know why he's not able to hang out with Katie and Orby or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Ten bucks from Commander Quat. Hey, Claw, have you heard of Minnie Manson? 
He's a funny little goblin man who sings songs and makes videos about how holding his pee gets him off. Oh, uh, now that sounds pretty promising right there. Uh, Minnie Manson, huh? Is that that's his name? 2,000 subs. Oh. Yeah, he does look like a funny little goblin man, that's true. He's got a video here that's three hours long. He's dressed as like a weird goth clown. Like a clown, or like a, like a mime, maybe? Like he's got suspenders and a tie and a gun. I mean, I'll just show you. He's got like a clown hairdo and like, and like cl gloves and suspenders and a tie and a gun. And he's doing like a, like a, I, I don't know what's going on here, but we'll save this one. That's a, thank you for the suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me see. Two months membership from Emin Matt Fees. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, but someone's got to say it. When users in particular are cross-eyed, it makes them look infinitely funnier. Captain Alex is pretty bland otherwise. Oh, no, that's incorrect, sir. Captain Alex has a lot going on outside of the cross-eyedness. What are you saying? Captain Alex continually threatens suicide and talks about how if he loses at his next Beyblade tournament, he's going to game-end himself in the middle of the fucking game, game store. You know, with all the children surrounding him. Uh, Captain Alex talks about how he's... He says weird racist stuff. And then he talks about how he's totally not racist because he wants to fuck black women. Captain Alex has a, a VR chat squadron of children that he's teaching how to fight... How to fight in VR chat. And, he, and, he, and he's got stolen Valor shit and a uniform that his mommy made for him to pretend that he's in the military. What do you mean? Captain Alex is brimming with interest. Captain Alex is a person of interest. What are you even saying? But you are right, though. The, 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 um, the cross-eyedness does add to it. I mean, it's not... I'm not gonna say it doesn't. Five bucks from Random Red. Hey, Deadwing Dark, can you review my DeviantArt, uh, DeviantArt account? It's good old-fashioned cringe. Look up Random Red Engine in DA, lol. Uh... Listen, if I do another DeviantArt stream, show up for that. And... Do we just immediately... Wow, we just immediately cut to the next song. No, okay. No transition there. How about that? Next time I do a DeviantArt stream, show up for that. I'm sure there will be one. It, there hasn't been one for a little while, but I do them from now and then, from time to time. If I don't remember, maybe someone will remind me. But, you know, maybe you'll remind me. Uh... But yeah, no, do, uh, DeviantArt stream, that'll be the, the time, that'll be the time and the place for that one. Um, two bucks from Re uh, Full Metal Fan 89 Big Gunt Energy. There's so much gunt on today's stream, it's been great. And only the good kind of gunt, too. Two bucks from Reverend Cudgel. Imagine hearing this in the other room. Sadness. Ah, could I say it? Yeah, just just Japanese noises and screaming and like noise like compressed noises from a toy, from a toy sword that he keeps playing with at, at all hours of the night. Yeah, um, five bucks from Emma Metfees. The Super Sentai guy doing all the anime poses looks like what would come out nine months after God of War Thor had intercourse with a ditto. Well, that just doesn't sound very pleasant at all. No, I don't want to have... I don't want to think about ditto sex. Two bucks from fuck 2 fort This user just got off work. Have some of my tips. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, two bucks from Lava Mantis. Favorite Wu-Tang solo album? Liquid Swords for me. I like Liquid Swords. Um, I kind of want to say, like, spiritually, I, I want to go with, uh, uh... What is it? The Return to the Thirty Six Chambers, the the uh, the ODB album, but uh, I don't know. I think I I I actually my actual answer would be Tikal. I really like Tikal. It's really re really replayable. It's like the great the the perfect length for a for an album. You know, it's like forty to fifty minutes or something, and every song is. It's one of those albums you listen to it and you're like, did I listen to the whole thing? Oh wow. Oh, it's done already! Wow. It's, it's a great album. It's a great album. Um, 
Uh, two bucks from Cereal Box. Have you heard of a user called Big Nasty Shrek? No, but that sounds like a big, nasty, fun time. Uh, big Nasty sh Shrek. I assume it's on YouTube here. Big Nasty Shrek has a bra moment. Oh, there's an archive. Uh, an archive with 13 videos. Inflation fetish rap. Oh. All right, then. Well, I'll save this one for later. I'll save that one for later. Um... Let me see here. Two bucks from Reverend Cudgel. Stream your roleplay, Clawman. Well, I mean, we're not going to do that for the D&D &D campaign, probably, because we're in the middle of that. I, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. You can probably get caught up to speed pretty quickly. I mean, I would be down for it. It would be, do it would be up to other people, and I wouldn't really know what to show in that scenario. I guess it would be down... F it would be up for... Uh, it would be if, uh, if our DM wants to put together all of the materials visually that would be needed for every segment of whatever we might do. Which could be a real problem, obviously. Like, you would need to have fucking a hundred maps available so that on screen, on the stream, at any given time, we could visually have, like, Oh, you wanted to go into that cave? Oh, okay. Let's open this map, I guess. Uh, that would be a lot for him to have to do. Uh... Uh, and I, I don't want to... I mean, I don't know. There's probably a way to do it. It would probably be, be down to him, ultimately, if he would be willing to do that. I think it would be cool. Uh, I think it would be a lot easier to do that for a smaller game, really. Like, uh, for something like the Goblins with Fat Asses. We were in and out on that one for, like... That was, like, 45 minutes, all, to, all said and done. And that included learning how to roll for our characters or whatever. So, you know, some more campaigns like that that are, like, really short. You know, maybe they can maybe be a little longer. You know, you do, like, a stream, do, like, three or four of them or something in a row. You know, whatever. Uh, that could be pretty fun. Maybe set up a few different ones that have, like, similar rule sets or something. But, like, different themes, you know, different goals. I would very much be down for that. I think that would be a good time. Uh, two bucks from M and Metfee's. Uh, I stand corrected. We need more Captain Alex. We do. We do indeed. Captain Alex is a very interesting user. He has so much that I didn't even mention. He has so much going on. All of his videos that are him just whining about how... How the... How the trolls have won. You know, I gotta... I gotta rant. We're done with Super Chats. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, I gotta rant. Uh, I really gotta rant because you got exposed. And they all know. I played this game 20 years ago, fool. Uh, Sims busting out uh, on the GameCube. And I think I played the PS2 version. And and I gotta say, I, I'm hearing that this has all been menu music from that, from that game. Uh, there, I've heard like maybe two or three of these songs in my life. This one and like two of the other ones. And a bunch of them I've just never heard. And I don't know what fucking menus exist in that game that I never heard those songs. I remember as a kid being like, why does this game only have like two songs in the menu? I, I guess my copy was just fucking busted or the GameCube copy couldn't hold all the music or something. Cause like, I don't remember most of the music, but I remember this one and a few of the other ones. Uh, this game, the, the, weirdly enough, the Game Boy version has a better soundtrack. Uh, same with the, the Herbs, also has a really good soundtrack on the Game Boy. Uh, anyways, thank you for stopping by everybody. Uh, this has been not really much of a user stream, but we did some users. We did mostly just a lot of trash. Regular tr classic trash stream. Classical trash. Uh, but thank you for watching. I've had fun. I hope you had fun. And uh, yeah, take a big fat penis and uh, suck it.